Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm just sort of getting a, a ready first. I've got everything um, or most things set up, but uh, just thought um, before we go through today's, um, you know, you know, actually start the actual painting, I'm going to go through the reference picture. Let me adjust this camera. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you the kind of process that I uh, take when I'm looking at a reference photo before I even start painting, because, uh, you know, I'm a firm believer that you should already have an idea of what you're going to do, especially if you want something that looks, you know, kind of as similar to the, the reference photo, just having a plan of it before and deciding um, what bits you want to draw out. So uh, thank you. For, um, everyone who's here I know it's uh you know for me over in Melbourne it's a good time because it's uh yeah it's just after after five and um quite easily you know can can just put on the the camera and, and stream but I know for a few people over in the states other places it might be a bit difficult but I appreciate um everyone being here so good to see you again Lindsay um yeah you're pretty many actually most most weeks and you know so it's a Melbourne scene this time. I thought I'd do, thought I'd do a Melbourne scene to celebrate being out of lockdown. And also, I I did get a uh, a request also um, to do this scene, um, basically a street a street scene. So there were a couple of um, suggestions, and I'm I'm starting to do this a bit more as well. I, I don't I don't think I'll do it every week. Um, but yeah, just I guess you know if there are people who are interested in painting something in particular or, or looking at me go through a specific scene, I'm always happy to to um, to give it a shot. But uh, Shinolan, uh, Shinolan Martin has actually suggested a street scene at at night. And um, I think it was I think it was Mara, Mara Gulen. She suggested uh, four landscapes. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, in this scene here, it's a, it's actually a scene of I'm not sure where in Japan. I, I can't remember where I got this reference photo from. But, you know, look, there's some orange leaves and and uh, stuff like that. So I thought this was quite a nice scene to do. So, um, hey, Maggie, Maggie, Matt, good to see you. And um, this is this is going to be a, a smaller crowd. Usually on Wednesdays, there's only a, a few people sort of um, coming along. I guess you know most most are asleep or um, or I guess from from Melbourne. So if you have any sort of questions you you want to ask or anything you want me to go through, please feel free to to pop um, pop it in the chats. If you're watching at home as well, uh, let me know where you're where you're watching from and um, what you're currently uh, working on for, for your watercolors. So um, if there's any if there's anything in, in particular you're struggling with or you need me to go through, I'm always happy to answer questions while I'm drawing and painting, that kind of thing. So take down the paper here, and I'm intending for this first um, scene to be more of a, uh, like a kind of a warm-up activity, and I'm going to stretch this reference picture a little bit. Now, it's a bit of a dodgy job because... Uh, just makes it easier but I hope you guys can see that okay it's kind of in the middle of the screen and um, what I'm going to do I'll, I'll just sort of talk to you just really quickly about um, how I interpret this scene what I'm going to do like kind of my my mental uh, process so firstly what, what I try uh, to do is spot the shapes so in terms of the shapes what I want to look at is what do we have um, in the scene um, so we've got uh, obviously this gate right in the center, and um, oops, I'm just having a oh, I think um, I think the stream just sort of cut for a little bit. I hope. Um, Hope everyone can still hear me. If uh, if everything's okay, just let me know. I was having for some reason the uh, video just stopped playing for a little bit, so I thought maybe it it cut out. But um, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay. Uh, so look, I'll just continue technology um, technology issues. But um, yeah, I'll I'll go on again. Um, basically, what I was talking about. So I look at the shapes. I've got this center region here. It's a just a, a square area. Um, a couple of pillars. 
a door kind of thing, a couple of pillars here on the sides, some trees at the side, and we've got this kind of rectangular sort of roof, uh, or rectangular from our angle anyway. So I'm spotting those main shapes, and then I'm looking at the colors. So we're looking at, um, there's lots of yellow in the center and orange, and uh, you know, we've got bits of brown and green as, as well in the background, and, and you know, on the rooftop there's blues. So that's already gonna give me an indication of what I'm gonna paint first. So I'll start with the yellows and all the warm colors first, and then I'll work my way down into the um, kind of cooler colors afterwards as well. So, um, and then I'm gonna spot lastly just the tones. So looking at the reference picture, what are the lightest and the darkest bits? And I think for the light, it's, a, it's easier to spot here. You've got a bit of this sky. Um, we've got a bit of the ground as well, which just has that kind of yellow, orangey color uh, peeking through. So I really wanna highlight that in my um, in my painting afterwards. So. That's how I sort of go through it in my head and um, have a general plan before I start. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna get uh, cracking with this. And um, what we'll do first, I'm just gonna grab out a couple of my pens. I've got a 0 0.5, 0 0.7 uh, liner. So the 0.5's here, the 0.7's here. And I'll start off by trying to, uh, firstly we'll need to turn the page this way. Um, it's a portrait style sort of orientation. That's something different, I guess. Uh, most of the most of the things that I end up drawing and painting, they are they are uh, landscape based. So this is yeah, we'll see how this turns out. I, I wonder if I'll change it up as well, perhaps leave a bit more room on the side to um, you know, maybe shift the the, this little gate to the left a bit so we've got more of a tree coming up the side or just emphasize some more trees um, but yeah I hope I'm sure you can see okay uh, on the camera just let me know if you if you're having um, any issues um, so let's go ahead and get started um, I'll also need to get the reference photo up so I'll start off with just a bit of air in the ground I'm, I'm also thinking perhaps I'll have someone walking um, walking through the scene. I'm um, thinking maybe on the right, but I like those figures like in um, inside the gate there as well. So firstly, let's just put in a bit of this ground area and just where the the, the gate finishes. The, it's a bit more of a simple composition, I suppose. And, uh, you know, I normally like more, a bit more going on here, but uh, I think this is a nice little warm up and it may be deceivingly uh, looks deceivingly simple but it may not be when i get into it so uh, especially with simple more simple compositions like this you've got to pay more attention to the shapes and um yeah make sure you get the yeah the main areas right anyway so let's uh let's give this a go um so firstly i'm going to uh get in a kind of area where the, the gate sort of comes out now we, we know um we know sort of around here, we've got the door. Uh, so remember, this is the bottom of the gate. Um, so we might have the door just sort of come up like this there. And just thinking about how far, I wanted about halfway through, halfway through the paper, because if we look at the top of the door, it kind of, it, it's around the halfway part, ju part, just underneath the rooftop. So, you know, a bit of that. And I'm gonna draw this coming down like, that there and that kind of just hits the ground and um interestingly there's a section here that's sort of that and then we've got um this bit of the door that kind of comes in so just to make it look more three-dimensional i suppose like this um so i'm going to bring this up okay and then i haven't got it in perfectly but it's uh i hope that will be sufficient and we're going to go ahead and uh, put in this section on the left of the of the door now because we've got the uh, one side of the door in and we know that it's a little bit higher kind of starts about here like that and uh, i'm not sure what it is i think it's just um it's just another wooden part of the door running towards the left side when it finishes around about here so i'm gonna just draw that in um, like that, uh, it's not really, you know, the structure of this is quite interesting. 
but I'm going to keep it simple, more like a rectangular base like that. And then we've got, um, you know, bits and pieces running through it. And there's another rectangle through there like that. There we go. That's a bit of, bit of a, that's an area there. It's here at the bottom. It's that. It's a little rectangle here as well, touching the ground. Put that in. And you know, this is this is where I kind of wanted to uh, change things up a bit. Let's. You know, we've got a tree here, and we've also got areas of um, leaves and all that kind of jazz running through that section. Um, and this is a this here is a tree trunk. Um, but I'm going to just outline that this little tree trunk a little bit there, just make it kind of come out a bit on the side like that, the branch. Um, I don't know, I think I'll just hatch away um, a section like this as well. And remember, a lot of this scene is kind of backlit. So we've got this, the, 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 uh, what is it, the, the light coming in straight from the back and it's um, moving towards the front. So, um, so basically like if you've got uh, all the light running through it's um, coming from the back to the front, you get a lot of this nice um, backlit effect and all the buildings and things you can almost get through in, in a, a few washes. So um, the main focus is just preserving that light. Look, uh, we will um, we will actually start get in a bit of the rooftop first now I, I kind of wanted to I want to kind of get get in the door a bit now we know the door the top of the door it's about halfway through so we can actually get in this middle section of the door like this there and um, bring this down like that and uh, there we go Something like something like that, and in this section, I can now put in the other part of the door, um, like this. And notice I've left a bit more uh, space here on the right because I, I think what I want to do is get a person walking, walking in a bit. Okay, so we got a bit of this door in, and I'm trying to just suss out exactly where it goes. I think we'll put in uh, the part of it like that just move this line up okay so we've got maybe a larger opening for the door which is nice so we can get a bit more of that light um coming through okay so just like that and we'll bring up the side of the door closest to the light yeah okay there that's some of this stuff here is it's just directional lines to indicate a bit of that 3d nature of the door um there's even something in here which i'm not sure exactly what that is but you know we'll put that in um and uh you've got tony you've got tony here as well um on facebook morning tony how uh, how's it going and um yeah it must be um must be the opposite sort of time for you over in the you're in the UK, aren't you? Thank you. I know we've got a few. We've got quite a few people watching on Facebook. If you're if you're there and you're um, watching, just uh, leave a leave a comment. Let me know where you're. Let me know where you're watching from, and um, I'd love to love to hear a bit more. Okay. Now, just making sure that it's up all right. Alrighty. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get in a bit of the side of the door. The top of the door has this kind of ornamental bit, bits and pieces, which I don't, I don't really uh, want to worry about too much. But we know that we've got, um, you know, a section here that's kind of dark underneath the top of the door. So I'm going to just put a few little squiggly lines going through that section like that. Um, there, this part of the door then starts to face um, out kind of this way there. So we've got a bit of that section there. Um, so that's a kind of 
top bit that's joined up. Now, I, I do think, you know, here in the front there, there are these little white squares. I'm not sure what they are. Um, you sometimes just notice bits and pieces that weren't really there uh, before. Well, they were there before, but you just didn't uh, didn't really notice them. Um, I will just lower this bit of that, um, uh, this area at the back as well, like that. And, you know, while I'm here, why not start hatching away like this and get in a little bit of this, this darkness um, over here, just underneath... underneath the uh, rooftop there and you know we've got some areas of white in here as well if you see this kind of like white squares that just sort of run all the way um, across quite interesting but uh, let's, let's firstly before we do that get in the rooftop so another line here like that I'm going to bring it out around about here and let's plan out about where we want to finish it off I think that's about it's more than it's more than two thirds of the way up. Actually, it's kind of around here and stops there. I'm gonna just use the side of my pen. I always do this in these sort of circumstances where I'm not a hundred percent sure um, of the measurements. But at the end of the day, uh, if you have just a general estimate, you'll be completely be fine. Don't worry too much about it. Um, this is. I mean, I wouldn't say it's half, it's less than half the um, height of this door from this dark bit here underneath the roof to the top of the roof um, to just this area of light underneath and then uh, coming to the front. So um, that's how I'm going to sort of do it. And uh, I've got Joan, Joan Dyson from Canada to, to uh, hear from you, Joan. And... Um, is this your, I think I, I might have seen you in the last, in the last session and uh, let me know if you've been here before, but welcome, um, you know, welcome to everyone who's watching for the first time. And I normally do these a couple, couple of times a week. So um, it's good to, good to have a different um, audience, especially at this time. It's a bit of a, usually for my normal viewers, it's um, a bit out of the way, be sleeping. And uh, Tony says lots of nice light in this one, Darren. Yeah, there's a, uh, this middle section here so it's really just trying to um, emphasize that and then a bit of light up the top there so the, the cool thing about it as well is that there's lots of um, lots of blues in the in the roof so I think the photographer might have actually edited this photo a bit but the roof has a lot of these um, blues maybe I don't know maybe purples and stuff in there as well um, but you know this is going to contrast and form some uh, complementaries with the uh, bits of trees and things as well. So I thought this was a nice little one to do. And um, we've also got Rhonda, Rhonda Kennedy. Uh, she says, hi, Darren, pleased to be able to catch your video and um, from Rhonda in Australia. Good to hear from you again, Rhonda, and thanks for, for coming along. And I uh, hope you hang around for the, the Melbourne scene at the end. I'm actually looking forward to that one. Um, yeah, I, I think that's, a, that's gonna be fun. A lot of wet and wet um, painting. But Linda, Linda Suta from Toronto. Um, hi, Linda, and welcome. Also got Patty, at, uh, Patty Anderson from New Mexico, US. Great to see you also, Patty. And um, it's good, really, really interesting to hear from everyone, different countries. And uh, if you're also interested in, in me painting something, drawing or painting something, um, I do take requests as well. You can check, uh, or, you know, either just message me or you can check on the Watercolor Mentor page and I put a little post there. The people have popped up a lot of requests. I didn't expect so many, but there's um, a bunch in there that I'm going to go uh, gonna go with. And uh, Linda, Linda McKendrick from Melbourne. And good to, good to um, hear from you, Linda. And from those of, those of us in Melbourne, um, you know, good times. <laughs> You know, I think this Friday, it's, uh, we're going to be able to do pretty much, well, most things, I suppose. I think the cinemas are even opening. So um, I hope you're all doing all right and um, uh, in Melbourne and some good news, some uh, better times on the horizon. And uh, we've also got Philip, Philip Stroll. How are you doing, Philip? And good to hear from you. And it must be, again, like pretty, pretty early for you in the morning. So, um, yeah, again, thank you for coming along. And if you have questions, 
drop them in the chats. So, you know, I've got them the, the rooftop of this uh, structure, okay, and there's, uh, I also need to probably draw at the same time that I talk. I always get into this habit of, get into this habit of, um, yeah, I suppose doing one thing at a time, typical male, I guess. Um, but you've got this, uh, oh, this sort of section that comes out like this. I don't know if I can do it because it's kind of coming out. It's kind of like this. There, a okay, bit of the roof. Look at that roof. It's a. It sounds like a. What is it? Um, the design of this is really interesting, and I could really get tied up in this for a long time. But let's let's uh, let's not. <laughs> uh, we. I know there's a roll. There's a. It looks like a roll. <laughs> That's what it. To me, it looks like. Um, and the good thing about these little structures on the rooftops is that it actually helps to indicate um, a kind of three-dimensional nature to it. And um, it, I don't know what I don't know how they're constructed, um, but it's very very intricate. There's lots of stuff going on in here. Uh, so I, look, I'm just going to try get in a little indication like this, and uh, what I think. To, you know, it is most important is mainly the lines. So, you know, for example, you've got bits like this. When you come down to the center of the door, the gate, it's got like um, the lines travel downwards, completely uh, hor um, vertical. But if as soon as you go out to the sides, you see the lines move a little bit more towards the sides, like this. Okay, and I've probably left, um, probably made these two close together, but that doesn't matter. You, know, you get the idea. There's another one here. Um, very, you know, simplified structure. I'm not going to. I'm not going to tr to to get these in perfectly, but um, you know, just an area like that. And you know, there's another one of these larger bits as well, um, running across that left hand side here. But before we do that, let's get in. Um, well, let's get in the left side of the roof. It's missing part of the roof, isn't it? So, uh, this is what I do first. We'll get in the general shape of it. So, just where it comes up like this. Um, so, at least that part's finished. And then we've got bits and pieces on the, on the top. And then we've got this area again at the back coming down the side there. Kind of mirrors this bit like that. There we go. That's finished. Put in a few lines and, um, you know, notice the way I draw the lines as well. Because they're curved, the lines are curved rather than straight, it makes it look like it has that cylindrical, uh, that cylindrical feel to it. Um, whereas if I just drew the lines completely, completely straight, it wouldn't indicate that 3D sort of nature um, of this area as well. So just a little trick. You know, there's another bit popping out here on the side as well. There, there, like that, part of that roof. And then we've got areas just run out the side like this. And I'm going to indicate that again, just, just a few lines, line work there. There's a larger section here, um, side of the roof, just comes in all the way to the back and then disappears off there. Uh, like that, you know, we could go on forever, really. I could go on forever doing this, but I promised myself I'm going to try to um, finish these ones off a bit faster. As I, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where uh, and it's relaxing as well, I suppose, but um, I think I do at times focus too much on the details. And I want to, I guess, get to a point where I'm. You know, my main focus is the, the composition and the the general the general feel of of a, of a scene, rather than trying to define everything exactly. But it's also good to do that if you're practicing, try to define you know what's going on. Now, there's this area of the roof, and it's quite interesting. They kind of um. There's almost little dips in it, like kind of little U's. See that? Just kind of little U's in between these little these sections. And so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put in a few of these 
lines just running underneath like that. Um, I'm not going to do them all, but um, you know, underneath each section like this, uh, you know, just a little bit of detail so that it appears more, say, yeah, just a bit more kind of textured. And I think these are tiles, so you know, these overlapping shapes are, are kind of important for that. Finishes actually off underneath here. It's sticking out. Um, so I get these circular, circular areas like that. And then really underneath um, is where it finishes off. So a bit of, a bit of line there, a bit of line work there, something like that. Oh, forgotten these two. One there, one there as well. Just like that. Um, again, oops, a bit of this stuff as well, kind of connecting on the rooftop on that side then these um ooh, look what have we got on this uh, this side made this side of the roof quite um with a bit of space there i didn't want all too much in there but uh you know, again these lines here are just running horizontal like that okay okay so i think that looks um i think that looks all right um for the, for the that area now we can just have a play around inside here we might have this these little holes, um, bits of, um, I guess, wooden bars where uh, w that just form the edge of the walkway. And um, what I really like about this area is that you have these trees, these dark trees that kind of bisect um, all that light. And so you can have some fun here. And, you know, because these are organic shapes as well, um, they don't have to be. Exact, because nature takes many different forms. There's a tree going in like that, um, and you can see it kind of just go through these bits and pieces here, there, and you know, the way I draw trees is, you know, I think I've mentioned this before, but you know, always get them to kind of branch off into twos or threes. They usually start with one one trunk area, something like this, and then, you know, move up. You know, here's the trunk, and then it can split off into another section like that. I like how they sort of go over to that left side of the, the page as well, very delicately, um, like that. But uh, near the top area here, this is where I like to put in a bit more, I mean, the bottom area where the trunk is, just a bit more detail, like that. And, um, you know, hold the pen pretty lightly for this section as well, because I don't want to, um, yeah, I don't want things to feel too uh, forced or too defined, especially out the back. Um, it's really hard to see what exactly is going on back there, but I know there's, you know, bushes and, um, you know, even at the bottom, there could be areas of, um, you know, greenery and things like that, little shadows and stuff on the ground, which I will also get in later. We do have a couple of figures here. Let me just, um, let, let's, let's try to put them in Okay, simple figures, just kind of walking off into the distance, like this. Yeah. Oops. Get that define that one a bit more. Here as well. They kind of crossed over a bit closer. I just put them a bit closer to each other. Here's a there's a leg and here's one here. They're kind of just walking into the scene. You, you know, it's not anything um too uh fancy or what have you, but there's an arm, you know. We got a couple of figures in there. You know, let's why not put some hair on one back, a bit of hair on another one here as well. Okay, here's a couple of these trees. I think they're trees. There's, you know, I'm gonna just put them all on a slant like this. Another one here as well. Um, I think these trees are also important to help me do um, draw a bit of contrast on this door. Because on this door, it's going to be all, um, it's going to catch the light. Um, well, it looks like it's kind of catching the light in that reference anyway. So it'd be good to 
emphasize it a bit more. So you know, here's another couple of branches and things going up into the background. Very easy to get carried away here with all the detail. Okay, so just remember a bit of darkness in there like that. Um, you know, the moment I start feeling like at the moment, I feel like I'm just detailing it too much. So I may actually stop, come back to it in a moment. So, you know, we want to get this area in at the front, kind of um, entrance of the door, gate. And I know there's a line that sort of runs here, that, look. Uh, maybe a bit more secondary line here as well. Yeah, remember, we don't have to do it exactly as what the reference indicates. I've already shifted everything over to the left because I, I'm thinking perhaps we'll get in another figure uh, closer by um, here or something like that. I'm, I'm trying to picture that figure as well in my mind to see if it's going to be around the right size. Um, fantastic. And uh, Philip says, thank you uh, for doing this. No worries, Philip. Uh, it's good fun for me. It uh, doesn't feel like work for me. So, um, always happy to. And I think it was, it was an, uh, someone's idea just asked me to sort of some, um, turn on the camera, kind of, because I know I sketch during the week and uh, sometimes I record it. Sometimes um, it's nice just not having the camera on and being able to, you know, experiment around and um, do whatever. But, you know, it's good to see that there's a few people that. And do pop around on the Wednesdays and um, and find it helpful. So a couple. Um, Rhonda says uh, on Facebook, Rhonda's Rhonda Kennedy's from Melbourne and Yahoo, we're out and loose. <laughs> yep, it's been a long time. Uh, it's been a really long time for us. And um, yeah, I got some friends over uh, over in um, the states and also um, in Germany and. Uh, you know, we've made the news over there apparently for the most lockdown um, place in the world. So uh, that's a first. That's a first that we made the news up there. Nancy Grace says, Hi, Darren. Nancy from the Philippines. Learned a lot from you. I was not into landscapes, but got interested because of your lessons. Thank you. And uh, great to hear from you, Nancy. And um, I'm happy that I've helped, um, yeah, get you into something different. You know, a lot of the times we, we want to try something different, but we don't know how or it just seems a bit too um, foreign to us to, um, you know, to give it a go. But, um, you know, it, it, it's something I think you should try in terms of different reference, uh, you know, different reference photos, you know, just trying to get in, um, you know, trying different, uh, different sort of references and different scenes. I think that's the only way to sort of figure out what you, um, enjoy doing and sometimes your you know your taste will change I certainly have found that um, you know with the stuff I'm drawing now I used to stick with more things like uh, beach landscapes and um, that sort of that sort of jazz but now I really um, I really make an effort especially with all these um, requests coming through and different ideas that people have um, to put in and, and try different sort of landscapes and um that really helps to to um put me and um, um get me out of my comfort zone a little bit so do appreciate that and you know look here's a you know this might be a tree coming out the back here this is where i i, I want to change it up a little bit now we've got all this structure and um you know man-made objects and stuff here which well, I mean, quite honestly, it looks like it um, it blends nicely into nature anyway. But I think having some more uh, looser shapes and things running around the back like this, I think, you know, I, I just want something a bit more chaotic and, uh, well, not chaotic, but loose in the background, something like that. Look at that. Look at this kind of branch coming up the side, maybe closer um, to the scene. You know, again, you can go ahead and hatch areas of it. I'm just deciding to do it. Just, I don't know. Um, just feel like it because I know this is going to come forwards and I just want to see what it looks like. And that's an important, that's an important aspect as well. Trying, 
uh, different ways, um, different things that you might not be comfortable with. But obviously thinking about it ahead of time as well. So if I you know, know these areas are going to be a little bit further in front. So yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and put in some um, areas of, uh, I don't know, these leaves or something just maybe joining on to these uh, bits of the, the tree. And one of the things I've really noticed is um, when you're doing these sort of drawings or with watercolors, you really have to find ways to simplify and exaggerate some areas um, because if you try to draw it exactly as a reference photo, um, it's a photograph. Photographs are great for detail. Paintings are, are great for uh, exaggerating um, you know, certain areas and, um, you know, composition wise, you can change it. We want to use the advantage of, of a painting when we're, when we're doing this rather than just copy the reference. So with this, I can shift that around to that side. I can put a figure in here. Suppose you can do that on Photoshop as well, but, um, you know, it's, it's just a lot more creative and more fun. If you do it this way, I, I find, uh, oh, I don't know if it's more creative, but, um, I just certainly find it more fun anyway. Uh, so here we got some a, a branch or something coming in from that left hand side. I like that. Um, I like that how it's sort of, uh, you know, what am I trying to say? I, I like how it just brings the two halves together because we can't have um, left and right kind of competing against each other. So by using some little lines and things for these trees and you know, look, I'm not even really, uh, I'm not even really too fussed on on the detail of such little bits and pieces. Just scribble in some. It's going in like that. Remember this area here. There's going to be a lot of um, light coming through, so we want to leave some areas uh, in here, just uh, basically, you know, untouched, so when we can go in there with a bit of the paints and things later we can just leave that area um with that said there's a lot of activity going on in here as well so i'm just trying to get in a few little just little squiggles um every time i notice maybe something going too straight I, I just move in the opposite direction it's almost random and that's the great thing about this i'm not under any pressure at all to replicate what's going on we are just trying to get in an impression and the leaves and i'm not sitting here going here's one leaf there's another one nothing like that i'm just drawing them as one big clump like that and we'll work out whether we want to actually put more detail on those leaves afterwards or not um I, I do want another one kind of coming through here and maybe um joining on a, a bit to the rooftop and uh, the, the rooftop though does need to appear separate so i am just trying to create a bit more contrast here with the rooftop i've used a, a thicker a thicker pen like that hopefully this will bring it uh, bring it forward a, a, a touch just like this okay just so that it looks more uh, closer to the viewer i can do this for the door here as well you know like that bring that down and we've got a bit more detail for the door and it brings it forwards um, one of the last demonstrations I did, I almost stuffed it up because I put a figure in and it was, um, it looked gigantic. So, uh, but I'm going to do it again. I'm going to try something else. Before I do, let's start sketching in this left side. I want to finish off this sketch in about 10, 10 more minutes, maybe 10, 15 more minutes, because I, I do think I'm feeling a bit much. So I can put in, let's try maybe get in a, a figure here. Um, we have the figure just walking uh, towards this area. I'm, I'm very light, very light sort of touch as well. Um, maybe they're kind of just stepping in this direction like that here and uh, leg here at the back, walking into the scene. And the head is around the same height as these figures here in the back because I want to indicate that it's a, you know, we've got a flat ground, flat ground over this section, you know. Uh, just an arm um, here, maybe an arm, the back, and um, there's a, there we go, maybe, um, 
a bit of that shirt as well. This bit of hair, um, that bit in a bag or something here. Rim. Always have to put in these bits and pieces like that. Okay, so that's kind of a figure, kind of almost walking through there. Uh, it's a little bit scratchy, but we'll uh, we'll make do. Make do. So I'm attempting to put in another one here as well. However, I, I I reckon I'll I reckon I'll leave it. Let's have a look at the ground now. There's all this space here in the ground. There's something um, something needs to go in here. It's just too much empty space. It's just too much empty space. So firstly, I'll get a little line going across here. There is a what is this? It's just a it's just a mark on the ground. Just a line on the ground. Something like that. Um, I don't know, I might regret that later, but it be nice to get in some of these shadows of the of the trees too. Now I'm gonna have to plan this one out a little bit actually. Um hmm. I'm just having a think. Now I will perhaps put a larger figure, maybe um here. This one may come out of the scene more. Uh, or perhaps just be sort of standing around. Um, it could be a couple of figures, you know, one here, just sort of overlapping with each other. That. And uh, remember to put on the shoulders. Necks, bit of the necks as well. And they don't look like... Uh, look funny. Here we go. Here's a... Here's a shoe. And... Um, you know, another foot here, and again, a bit of the, the shoe facing um, that direction, the left, left sort of leftward direction, and um, might actually make this one a bit larger now. That there, and uh, you know, here, let's get in a bit of detail. Uh, the one, these two will be facing in this. Perhaps in this direction, facing the the us there, a bit of that shirt, and um, same here. Maybe this one's just standing over on the on the side for whatever reason. Um, bit of the the legs of this uh, figure as well. One there, and the other one may just be um, kind of next next as well. Okay, bit of hair, let's get in some bit of longer hair for this one, um, like that, okay, there's some, there's a few figures, there's something going on, maybe he's holding on, he's got one of these little satchels there, I don't know what that is, there's another figure, like that, um, I think that's enough for figures to the ground. Let's bring this out. That we kind of got more of this perspective going on. And I like I like these uh, little call them these little blocks on the ground. These little blocks. Okay. Get in some of them at the back like this. That blocks. There we go. There, 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 there. I'm trying to just get the lines to like cut over, like touch the center of another block. Looks more interesting that way. There we go. Bit of that. And um, yeah, basically on the ground, there's all this, there's all these flowers that have uh, dropped there. I think they're like, they look like purplish lilac sort of color on the ground. And um, I, I want to indicate some of that with the watercolors later. Um, there's probably a few other things we could do here, but I, I reckon I'll leave it. I reckon I'll leave it and um, use it as a bit of a contrast and 
um, perhaps keep it a bit darker here and then still have the light come through. So firstly, let's get in some of this stuff here in the background and the rest of the trees. What time is it? 6.45. So another five minutes and I think I should be able to, to, um, to finish this one. Um, I'm uh, just having a look at the comments again. So ooh, we've got... Uh, Philip said, I love your, your line work. Ever think of publishing a coloring book of, of just uh, line work of different sceneries? Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea, Philip. Maybe, maybe sometime. Um, I, I'm terrible at remembering to scan these things or uh, what well, you can only scan them really. If you take photographs, I find the resolution's just not as good. Um, just don't get as an even detail over the whole piece. But I'm terrible at remembering to scan these things in, these things in before uh, actually coloring them. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's a good idea for some, some time, Philip. Um, if uh, I get a chance to, I'm just trying to detail a bit of that roof a bit more, like that. Okay, some more of this. You know, this is basically a mirror of of this other side here. Like that. Yeah, just a bit of that mirror, um, well, not a mirror image, but kind of just replicates everything that's there on the left. There, a bit of that. Where does it come off? It touches the ground around about here. So that's something. And um, now, for the fun bit, we can go in and get in some trees and uh, larger trees as well. Some nice verticals. And uh, here, I'm going to get one to cut through this, this building a little bit like that. Cut the edges there. Sometimes I regret this this sort of haphazard way of drawing things because if you look, if you're not careful, um, you can overdo it. But um, I, I've had, you know, I've drawn so many of these trees now that I feel a bit more confident in being able to pull this off. Um, as long as the lines go in that general direction, you're all good. Okay, looks like a tree's coming off his head, growing out of his head. You know, these are too straight. So what I'm going to do is just move this one over to the left. That, okay. sorry, to the right, to the right, and then um, come back to the left. This, okay. and uh, it's just something that I do. If this is this area is kind of. Um, unbalanced, I don't know how to explain it, but if we've got everything just going up in one direction, I feel um, that's just going to stick out of the page uh, in that area and draw too much attention. So that's why I will try to try to change it up a bit there in the background. I mean, all this stuff here is really just quite dark anyway. It should all just be hatched. We can just also wait um, later once we get into the the watercolors but um you know doing it this way if you notice when you hatch as well if you draw the lines further apart um the object appears lighter if you compare it to this one where the lines are very close together it looks darker that looks darker than that for example because the lines are closer to each other if i did this for example here you know even that section looks a bit lighter than that section because the lines are further apart so you can even it out now like that there you go, it kind of looks the same, right? A little trick that I I learnt. And be uh, purposeful when you do it. Just be, you know, I know people say just be confident. And um, you only get that way from practicing and doing tons of these trees and shapes uh, so that it, it's just not as... Um, daunting to tackle them anymore but you know there's another one tree going up uh, i don't know like a branch or something here here over in the background and it's cutting through these other ones here you know, something like that and all this stuff at the top you know i might even have just a another tree running through the back like this Oh, we're just sort of in the background, completely going completely straight there. And we've got, of course, um, 
bits of these trees and the corn, bits of the uh, the leaves, clumps of leaves going up as well, like that, and um, a bit of line work, getting in the, another branch there, um, and this is like a trunk, so. Uh, oops, I shouldn't have colored that one in. That should be a that should be a um, large large clump of leaves. But we've got a lot of stuff in here, really. I mean, it's for this section. It's you know, it's quite a lot of detail. But practice. This is really just good practice for you um, in drawing and and getting in these shapes. You're going to have to draw trees and like lots and lots of landscapes. So why not use this as a as an opportunity to practice and um, get in some shapes that you're not usually uh, used to drawing? So, you know, there at the back end, there's some details uh, in there. I really don't think I will focus all too much on, on what's going on. Just a little, this pen I'm using is a point, uh, 0.38 liner, so there's not too much. I wouldn't say there's much uh, of a point on here. But it's it's uh it's it makes less of a mark than the other pens, so I can go in and just uh, try to detail a bit more. And um, what I'm trying to do is just get this impression that the trees are getting smaller and lighter as you move into the background, something like that. Um, I don't want to overdo it though, so you know, something like this should be okay. Um. There. Yeah. Okay. Looking good. Looking good. Um, what else do I want to do? These, these, these people here. We gotta, we gotta get them to come forwards more. So this is. Uh, I'm using a thicker liner to just um, outline the edges of the figures. The line work here to try to um, exaggerate, um, exaggerate them further. Okay. There we go. Couple of feet there. Um, another thing I'll do some more little bits of line work on the ground. So just following the perspective, perspective lines there. They're kind of going into the scene like that here as well, um, like that. Let's get all going through that. Maybe another one coming out there. Um, I think that's it. So. Let's go ahead and get the painting done and um, have some fun with this. How's everyone doing? Um, who's following along and um, who, uh, uh, let, let me know if you have any questions or if you're needing some help. And um, you're also checking Facebook. We've got, you know, a bunch of people walking, watching on Facebook still. So yeah, let me know also how you're, how you're going. We've also uh, got a comment from Sim. Sim May watching from Germany. Good to see you, Sim. And uh, I don't think I've I don't think I've uh, caught you here before. Did you find it from did you find it from uh, our watercolor group, the watercolor beginners group? Let me know. There's a few more comments actually. Um, Yef Art says hi, watching from the Philippines. And um, human figures are hard to do. They certainly are. Uh, but the more you practice them, you the more you realize that there's a you know, there's a general pattern in how they, um, you know, how they look, you know, the, the size, you sort of get used to also, you know, doing them the right size, depending on how far or close they are from the scene. And I just try to simplify it. You know, the, the head, I just put in a kind of square, uh, a rectangle to begin with. Body is like a rectangle. Um, and, you know, some people will have like a wee bit more heavy down the bottom heavy at the, or heavier at the top. Um, and then the, the, the legs are just two kind of long triangles. And that's how I um, generally put, put figures together, especially if they're standing upright. Um, so I hope that helps Yef. Yef Art. Uh, Philip says, I guess I should have said a watercoloring book. Uh, following you has forced me to sketch. Uh, must date, must draw, and must draw more freely while still being careful with it, which has uh, made it look better. And um, yeah, it definitely, you, you know, like because you don't, you're not going through with the, the pencil, everything you put down, you just got to accept. And I find you just, um, yeah, you're a bit more careful. You're a little bit more careful and um, 
uh, you know, your line work's more thought out. So it kind of forces you to, to learn how to draw. And I, I know I put these tracing stencils up for everyone, but uh, I really recommend just to follow along and give this a try. And a lot of, that's one thing that I do differently from a lot of um, other people that who do, you know, uh, those pre-drawn templates and things like that. Um, they kind of trace them on. I every time I draw something or or paint something, you know, I want it to look different. I want to try it, try it, uh, make it look a bit different from the reference. And if I'm attempting the same reference that I've done before, I always want to make it look a bit different from the previous one. And that might be just trying different techniques. I'll use it as an opportunity to say, hey, you know, I didn't like the way the buildings looked last time. You know, I kind of should have exaggerated the rooftop more. I should have um, made them a bit larger. So I'll change it up. Or maybe I didn't like the color scheme, so I'll change that up as well. So it's a it's a little thing, but um, certainly uh, certainly helps a lot. So um, to, to you know to help you improve. I don't know what's going on here, but there are these kind of light marks across the ground. If you can see them, I've only just noticed them. This I think it's just the the um, the tiles and things running across the ground. But I'll just put in a few little marks like that there just to get rid of that um part so uh philip philip also says uh also appreciate how you've added more interest by adding more people there's that we can really use artistic license yeah you know don't feel restrained by what's in here uh you know I, this this may not have worked i don't know if it will work but you know i, I think it's it's also like trying to step out of your comfort zone a bit and and um, that's the only way that you're able to to improve and um, yeah try new try new things. So uh, sometimes the composition will ask for it as well. You know, it's just, I thought this was composition was very um, biased towards the left hand side because I've moved this whole structure to the left. So I've got to balance that out. I've got to put a bit more here. If I didn't put anything here, um, I, I reckon it would just look too. Uh, I don't know, it, it, the eye would, you know, I'll just focus more on this area and you wouldn't be going into this area. So I kind of want it to, someone to sort of look here, uh, maybe then follow the trees upwards there, come down here towards this side, then come back here, maybe to the front. So this sort of um, eye movement, I think is, a, I don't know, I sort of try to think about it if someone's, what you know, looking at it and what what could I add in to make it, more interesting so that they're looking in at different areas of the painting rather than just fixating on one uh, one point the whole time. Okay, uh, Sim, uh, Sim says, uh, yes, okay, so you did find it from Watercolor Beginners. My first live session, thanks for sharing the skills. Thank you, and thank you for coming along, Sim. And, you know, um, it's good to have you around for the, for the first time and, um, you know, feel free to ask questions. Yef Art says, your sketching is really good. Thanks for giving tips. Thanks, Yef. And it, look, my sketching wasn't always like this. I've still got uh, a, a lot to, to learn and a lot to, um, to uh, continue on with. But, uh, you know, the, the more you try things like this, the, the you know, essentially the, the better you get. And don't take it too seriously as well. That's probably my biggest advice. Don't take it too seriously. With art, uh, I, don't know, I don't know about most, you know, about everyone, but I certainly find that if I'm just stressing about what I'm drawing, um my painting turns out crap my drawing turns out crap you have to be a little bit relaxed when you are when you're um doing art but uh that's just for me okay so uh, i'll have a quick look uh on facebook we have um nathalie Nathalie um, Chitushi, she says, uh, hi, good morning. Hi, Nathalie. Looks like there's a little flag above your name and it says milestone follower. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, Facebook has, has given these new sort of um, badges to everyone. Milestone follower. It must, have, um, it must have been one of the first following my work then. Nancy, Nancy Grace says, thanks, Darren. Yes, I'll try doing landscape soon. And you're doing the pen twirling too. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, uh, this is just something that I've always done. I, I learned it during high school, and it's now just become a habit. And uh, yeah, I, I remember when I was younger, uh, well, younger, like around maybe 13, there was a website. This was, um, I mean, we had one computer in our house, 
and it was uh, my uncle had got us this uh, computer and the, and I, there was a website that I used to go to all the time that was just dedicated to teaching people how to spin pens and and twirl them around and things like that. Now when I'm not even thinking, uh, it's just what I do. <laughs> uh, so, um, Amy with Myrtle says, hello, Darren, and hello, good evening. Uh, hello, everyone, good evening. Hey, Myrtle, good to see you again from uh, last uh, last week. And Myrtle says, looks great. Thank you. And yeah, Yef says, Yef Art says, um, do you use grids? Um, so you mean like the gridding, gridding technique to draw things out? You mean the gridding technique? I know some people ask about that. Uh, the gridding technique is basically where you, yeah, you, 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 there's applications on your phone and it separates a, a photograph. It draws lines down the photograph and then maybe into like three by three grids or something. And then you just draw what's in each grid. It makes it easier to transfer a, a scene on there. The only time I grid is probably when I do portraits and I want to make sure that portrait looks um, maybe you know, exactly like the, the photograph in it, and it makes it easier rather than me spending, you know, two hours trying to draw all the features in, um, you, you know, I, I find like it's easy if I just grid, I can maybe get in a, a, a really basic indication of the features and everything in half an hour. So that's about the only time that I use a grid and I portraiture is something that I, I I enjoy, but I'm less inclined to these days I, because I'm I'm getting a lot more looser and more kind of abstract with the stuff I'm doing. I'm like I don't have the patience to sit there and draw a, and, and paint a um, a portrait now. But I, you know, I used to do that. I did, you know, I used to spend a whole day doing a portrait. So, yeah, I hope that kind of answered your your question. Uh, yes, yeah, I think that's all the I think that's all the the questions. And um, yeah, I'm really really happy to have a few people watching along this time is sort of mid midweek and um so let's uh let's go ahead and start with the painting okay so like i said before we want to focus on the light the areas of light so um again that's why i'm gonna use yellow all those sort of colors um i think this scene here, you know these two scenes that i'm doing today have a very strong area of light um, and contrast, which is uh, which is a good um, uh, good good way to learn how to preserve areas of light and dark. So let me get my stuff on the table. Here's my palette. Should be able to see more of the palette today. Uh, well, maybe not actually. It's kind of still half obscured. Maybe like this, you can see a bit of it. So. I will pick up a bit of uh, yellow, a bit of lemon yellow. I want this to be really bright and uh, especially down that center area. So lemon yellow, I'm just picking some of that up. Let's drop that straight in there. Might actually use a smaller brush. Um, that mop brush is a bit clumsy. Let me get some more water on this like that. Um, very strong lemon yellow. Now, I probably actually got a, got some green in here accidentally. We'll see, I always tend to accidentally mix bits of greens and things in. So there we go, a bit of that. And let's get a bit of orange. I've got some pyro orange and a bit of pyro red as well. And this is just to get in some of this color on the, uh, what do you call it, the, the trees. So they kind of indicate a bit of this red and the, the orange uh, of the leaves. Like this, and, and don't fuss around too much. I mean, if you, if you um, if it mixes and uh, just looks a bit uh, clumsy, just let it mix. This is this part of the painting is just really to get in the uh, the really loose details, firstly, and uh, yeah, just to just to get in a basic wash. You know, even on top of this door. I'm just putting a bit of bit of um, yellow ochre here on both sides of the doors. Bit of yellow ochre, maybe some of this stuff here, which is uh, what do you call it? It's burnt sienna. A little bit of burnt sienna in there, running through like that. Just mix it on the paper. Let it do its thing. Okay, and um, let's have a look. What else do we want to do? We've got yellow here, just coming down. And remember, it kind of just disappears off into the front. 
as well. And so I, I want to stop it. I want to stop it up to a certain point. Well, here's some of that brown. I'm going to put in a bit of that here as well. A bit of burnt sienna here. Burnt sienna is a, also a kind of warm color, I have to remember. And I probably should have added a tree there, but it doesn't matter. We'll make do without it. Uh, some more burnt sienna here, like that. Um, let's have a look at this area. I like the yellow. More yellow in here. And, uh, you know, there's even some yellow coming out the back there. Uh, perhaps... Well, I think that's it. I think that's it. Do I want to exaggerate this? That's the question. Do I want to exaggerate this? No. Something like that I, I think should be fine. Uh, I may, you know what? I may bring it down just a little further, just in case. Just like that. And um, there we go. Bit of that. And now, uh, what we will do, uh, while that area is still kind of wet, I'm just putting in a bit, a bit of this big bit of... What is this? Uh, I'm trying to say burnt sienna, burnt sienna through there, like that, and just while I can, okay. And um, this bit at the bottom, we're gonna get purple, and I might actually mix up a tiny bit of this. I've got enough of it, really. That may not be right. Let me pick up a bit of this. It's kind of a yeah, it's a lilac sort of color. It's very vibrant. And almost too vibrant. I want to mix some neutral tint in there. Just dull it down a bit. Let's drop in some of that here. That. Uh, maybe some more of that. Let's have a look at that color. Okay. That looks okay. But it, uh, but it does look a bit strong for my liking. So, um, yeah. I'm just going to dull that down a little. Okay. This. Let that sort of mix in. With what's going on here with all the light. Um. I do want some more blue in there, not in, not in all sort of parts, but some more blue, like this. Yeah, I'm really making use of warm and cool colors, complementaries. And, I mean, they're not exact complementaries, but certainly um, they're going to draw more attention to this area um, of the light where it um, bisects areas. Let me have a look what else I could do. I know I've got a little flat brush here. I can pick up a bit of yellow and just drop that in. This, you know, for example, to um, get in a little bit more of light sort of running through there. I don't, don't want to overdo it though. Okay, something like that. Sort of softer on that side. Let's drop in some more color here. Um, a bit more blue on that side. And then some of this kind of pink color here, this lilac color. But while everything's wet, this is really a great time to go ahead and do all this stuff. Yeah, there. A bit more blue. It's too purple, a bit more blue. You know, drop that in like that. Um, a bit more of that purplish color in there. There. Okay. And um, maybe some neutral tint as well here in the areas of the foreground just just uh, especially in that edge like that maybe some at the front a bit of neutral tint just to dull this area down and to also darken it a bit more here the, at the front so i can exaggerate that, uh, that light running through okay um a bit of the trees look at that just some of this area yeah a bit of this um trunk I'm using a large flat brush as well, that uh, round brush, sorry, large round brush. I mean, large as in it's a point, sorry, it's a 10, number 10 round brush. Okay, going in, and, and what I'm doing is that I'm putting in these trunks first of these trees. Okay, let's, and, and I'm, you know, the reason why I'm hurrying um, is because I want some of it to kind of mix on a little bit to this um, roof area. Okay. And we also don't fuss too much around with all the shapes. Just want to make them, um, yeah, you just want to make them dark enough to create some contrast, especially behind these figures here. That there needs to be some darkness behind there. So a bit of this color, just a bit of warm color there. It's really, really just um, neutral tint and a bit of burnt sienna. 
something like that. Uh, you know, for example, in this area here as well, um, we can put in a bit of orange. Okay, let's get in some of these fall colors, a bit of orange and a bit of red mixed together. Um, that, that, and okay, we can already start putting it in. This is a kind of shortcut way, and honestly, I think it's one of the best ways to paint in watercolor to let everything mix together and um, all wet into wet sort of work like this. Okay. Uh, while this is still wet, the air is especially still wet, I'm going to also drop in some, a tiny bit of um, purplish color into this rooftop, just a, a little bit like that. It's all, ba it's all basically the same color, but just different um, levels of tone in there. So a bit of that in there um, like that. Okay, and uh, hopefully this will blend a, a teeny bit. Okay, that's that's looking okay. Um, there. Okay, and this is going to contrast a bit with the trees as well because we're going to have some, um, yeah, basically some darker tones and warmer tones here in the background. Uh, hues, I mean, so it's coming across a bit of this stuff coming across there as well, like that. Um, like that. You know, this stuff is slightly dried, so I can go in, put in a bit of orange in, in some of these areas like that. And even in this area, perhaps it's too it's it's too bright. So I'll just dial that down. Head like that. There. Cut around. Um like that. You know, you're sort of just altering and bits and pieces. Now this needs to be darker. Like this. Okay. Some more of this orange, just spread a bit of that around. And don't worry if it doesn't look like all that much now, um, I'm certain it's going to start looking a bit more, um, you know, a little bit more realistic once we come in with the, yeah, do the second layer. So a bit of yellow here. There's some yellow here for the sky. I need that there. Okay, because otherwise we're wondering where's all this yellow coming from if it's not not reflected up there as well. So some of that, let's have a look. Some more orange like this and some more reds like that. Okay, drop in the leaves, a bunch of leaves and, and you might have things mixing in. That's okay, just let it mix. If it wants to go into that area of the roof, well, probably don't do that, but you know, let it, let it um, mull around a bit. We'll have some of this darker brown paint now and look here I am just dropping in some areas and if if you if the um, size of that brush is a bit too much you so pick up another brush like this a smaller um, a smaller round brush to sort of finish this off okay like that um, there a bit more orange here let's have a look a little bit more um, maybe some yellow in some of these areas. I, I don't want to also get rid of all the white on the paper. So um, I feel like it just, it, it creates tiny little highlights and areas of interest. So at the same time though, at the same time though, we just also got to be careful. We're not leaving too, too much of it in. So uh, let's have a look. I think some darkness behind this area. Yeah, let's have a look. No, actually, it's a, it's actually kind of a green color. We got some sap green. Pick up a bit of sap green. I think that's what I'm kind of missing in some of these areas. We can drop in some of this a bit of sap green. Uh, maybe not all the trees are this like kind of bright orange, whatever. There. Um, but I do want to leave a lot of those oranges in because it is a fall scene. So. Um, yeah, a bit more orange in some areas if it's too, um, you know, if it's the same tone the whole way through, just change it up a little. Okay, like that. Okay, good. A um, bit more darkness behind here, the door, like that. All right. Now the figures, I do want to put some color on the figures. So... I think if we go through and just drop in a bit 
here and there we find out we've got all this purple and stuff here sort of cooler colors i want to balance that out let's get in some get in some red okay this can be a red shirt this person's wearing but i'm going to also put in some yellow in there too like that okay something like that okay see the color um it doesn't matter this one on the right what color do we want to make it uh, we'll put in some no, that's that's too much. Let me go with a bit of yellow, uh, just a muted yellow um, mixed. It's really just yellow mixed in with a bit of that purple, um, just to get in some color. Really, I'm not too fussed about what color exactly. This one here, what should we do? Maybe some Naples yellow, like this, something like that. Okay, just to get rid of the white of the paper. Um, bit of uh, color now for the faces I'm just going to add in some uh, a bit of color we can also we can use you know all different types of colors for the flesh tones really um, I, I use a combination of uh, burnt sienna um, a bit of ultramarine blue uh, also some Naples yellow some normal lemon yellow plus yellow ochre a bit of bit of uh, pyro red depends um a light wash get a light wash over the, the figures here the back this blue and it's just look at that it was just really touch touch and go okay so that they they, they are there um so there's not a huge amount going on okay uh good good now probably the last thing i want to do it's very subtle but there are some shadows and things in here i'm just going to spray this area pad so I just sprayed it down a little and uh, I'll pick up and normally I don't use a brush this small but this is a number four brush little number four brush I'm going to pick up some neutral tint a little bit of neutral tint and mix it with some warmth a bit of the uh, burnt sienna okay and here let's we can try um, I think that's a bit too much but um, a bit of this kind of going on I can just wet the bottom area as well and a bit of this wetness there too um, that might come back and haunt me, but you know what? Doesn't matter. I think it'll be okay. Due to this, you can see there's kind of like these shadows of the trees running here, um, coming towards the back, and even there's a shadow for the door, um, which is actually a sharper-looking shadow. And you, even on the people, there a little bit of a indication like that. Um, there. What else do we have? There's just shadows and things running across the ground. And to avoid them being too, uh, you know, too obvious, this is why I'm doing this, so that it just looks more uh, subdued. Okay. The shadows are still there. Okay. Be careful. You don't overdo it. I want to leave that area of light in there. Okay. Um, some of the the detail here for the the legs of these figures i'll put in some neutral tint and a bit of uh a bit of brown neutral tint like that some here like that maybe a bit for this one um that's it i think that's pretty much the first wash completely done um so i will um finish this off with a second wash but uh, let's have a look in this area maybe maybe there's a little more i can get in just a teeny bit more detail i can get in, in the roof yeah okay it's 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 wet enough actually so there we go we, we know there's some dark areas if you look in the roof like this area here is darker um the center part so i'm just trying to get in some darkness in here it's just really it's just a bit of purple a little bit of darker purple just Mixed in like that, quickly as well, just to drop it in. Okay, there, because I I think I'll go through it again anyway. There, there's some um, marks also running across like this. Bit of darkness under this one there. Yeah, uh, yeah. The rest of it's just all going to be pretty dark, and I'll have to get that in with uh, a second wash there's always a limitation of how much detail you get in with each one um 
So uh, I'm going to dry it off and um, let me know how you're going. Let me know how you're going with the, uh, with the painting. And um, we will continue. But yeah, just pop in your, pop in your comments and uh, I will get back to you. Let me just mute the, the audio so you don't have to listen to this horrible sound. Ready. That's dried off very, uh, very quickly. It's, uh, it's kind of warm over in Melbourne at the moment, so that's contributing to it. I'm going to check the chats, and uh, my plan is to finish this off by oh, a 7.40 by the most, and then we'll start on the second one. So um, let's have a look there. There's a few comments, and uh, Liesl, Liesl uh, Zabalo on Facebook says, I love your style, really. It's uh, so carefree and spontaneous. Yeah, look, it's, I, I, I tend to, I, tend, I try to do that these days. It's one of the few things where I can actually not have to think too much and there's not, you know, huge consequences. And um, I, I think like when you're starting out in watercolors and painting and things, you, it's, it's that temptation that you, you want to be very careful and often like it matches people will paint um according to their personality as well so if you're a very kind of analytical person and you're very um yeah i guess you you, you know you work with numbers and that sort of thing you often start off with you want to make sure you get everything correct and and you know i used to be like that as well but um i i'd use this now as a way to express um you know just a scene in my own way change things up sort of sort of step out of my comfort zone a little bit so that's kind of where i'm coming from uh thank you thank you lisa and uh, thanks for watching and uh there's a few more comments i'm just having a look on uh facebook valerie um says morning darren i'm now up and half awake watching and listening as you paint love this subject you've chosen thanks valerie and um geez, what time's it what time's it for you over there it's actually a subject that i decided to to go with because it's it's just a little bit more simpler than some of the other ones you know i tend to pick a lot of subjects with just complicated buildings and lots of shapes in here so i think something like this um probably less intimidating for beginners to start out with and while it's not completely simple um yeah like you, you get to practice a few different things figures trees organic shapes and also like this man-made shape which is a uh yeah basically this gate so a bit of perspective a bit of depth as well creating um depth in your painting so i hope that's uh, helpful and uh, Yeth says, you are very brave in applying the colors. I'm always afraid when doing the coloring because I'm afraid that I might ruin my drawing. Yeah, um, I, I think like, look, with the first wash, keep it pretty light and uh, just think of it as, you know, you know, if, you, if you're like, you know, doing a coloring in book, essentially, just keep it very nice and light and um, get in the lighter colors in here. So simplify it down, and then the, the second wash, we're going to just combine and make get all the dark colors. So that's how I simplify everything down. Light colors, and then we'll go dark colors. Obviously, we've got some dark colors in here as well. Um, and the reason why I've done this dark bit first is because I wanted this to be soft. If I waited, did all the light colors, and I just let that dry, and I put in the dark colors, I'm going to get a sharp sharp sort of shadow here and it's just going to look too awkward so i like how this has kind of come through same with the dark slightly darker shadows of the trees you know looks a bit like a shadow doesn't it so hope that's helpful and yvonne hey going yvonne uh, yvonne ulmer long time watcher i think you've been here for, for a while and it's uh also kind of similar to to um to valerie it must be very um very sort of early for you at the moment or, or late so good to have you um uh, good to have you here and uh, Maggie, Maggie Max says, I love it. My drawing is getting better and um, we'll paint it tomorrow. Awesome. 
you know, I like to complete everything in one sitting. I, for some reason, if I let this sit for another day, I'll, I'll probably not get around to doing it. And it's just uh, how it is. I have to finish it. it, it the watercolors has, a, has this sort of sense of urgency, especially if you're in between a wash. You notice I'm just feverish. You're frantically just trying to get in all these colors and get them to mix because you're, just, you're getting the areas that are drying here and there. So you kind of, uh, watercolors is a kind of, uh, if you paint it in the way that I do, it has a time frame that has, has to be, it dictates, uh, uh, you know, how things have to be done. Otherwise, you're just not going to get softness in there and, and these, these blending effects. And Lindsay says, looks good, yours especially, but happy with mine, but prefer your composition. Yeah, look, um, there's, there's no right and wrong composition, really. I mean, there's just, you know, different different things that can help out uh, depending on what you want to imply. Uh, composition is such a, it's, it's, it's such a uh, large topic. I mean, you can talk about color, color composition. You can talk about, you know, um, shapes. You can talk about, um, you know, tonal composition. So there's lots of different things you can try. I mean, for some, some people, you might want to even just, darken the background completely could be a nighttime scene that could change the composition so little little um decisions like that or well, little decisions uh even simple ones like that can have a very very um, drastic sort of effect so uh lindsay's uh, valerie says 9 24 a.m <laughs> can you hear me crunching i'm eating breakfast <laughs> awesome a good uh it's a good good um good time i don't have breakfast anymore Actually, I I just tend to skip it. I, I don't know why, but I, I never really feel hungry in the morning. And um, yeah, one of my friends just got me into just skipping breakfast. And so yeah, I've been doing that for a while. And I look, I'm still around, Valerie. So Yef says thanks again for your tips, Darren. Okay, I'm not finished yet, guys. So I, I've been talking a lot. So we will go. Uh, there's one, a couple of couple of questions on Facebook. I just quickly uh, address those. But thank you for all your questions. Really appreciate it. And uh, Painting with Myrtle says, I love this color mix. I'm happy that you're using blue, purple, green for shadows. I would have just used gray or black. Um, this is inspiring, especially. I told you last week I'm scared of doing the shadows. Now I'm beginning to understand and be more brave using colors. Thanks, Darren. Always inspiring tutorials you do and beautiful artworks you have. Um, soon, I hope I can watch you paint live at the gardens since our lockdown is uh, lifted this Friday. Oh yeah, I remember you asking about that, um, Myrtle. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try organize some some sketching some sketching events over in Melbourne. So uh, look, I don't really know how I'm. Well, I have a general plan of how I'm gonna do it. But you know, I go out every now and then, and I sketch in public. So you know, you guys can join along if you're in Melbourne, and we can go out and maybe go somewhere nice like the Carlton Gardens or something, and just sketch something together. So um, nearly made, nearly forgot about that, Myrtle. But uh, thanks for thanks for reminding me. Thea Hayes asks, when you mix your color, how much water? Yeah, look, I I, I sometimes forget to well, quite often forget to explain how I'm mixing the colors in, in terms of the the, the concentrations. Um, so remind me if you guys are, uh, if, if I, if I've missed something out or if I'm, if I'm uh, not including enough detail, just let me know the, all the colors in this mix that I've, that I've done, it's all very light washes. So in, in terms of the, the, the water to paint concentration, I'm using about one quarter, um, one quarter, um, concentration paint to three quarters water but then i'm also adding in um some you know three quarter three quarter paint to one quarter water co um uh, concentrations in some of these areas i'm dropping that in so if you notice this this orange darker than that kind of this orange or yellow yeah because it's 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 thicker i put in a bit more of a thicker paint that's because i've gone over everything first in a lighter lighter wash while everything's wet so I just drop it in but one thing you want to make sure is that all the line work shows through, especially in this in this sort of uh, line of wash. You don't want to go through your first your first um, wash and darken everything, and it's just going to be very difficult for you to figure out what to do next. So let's go ahead. I've got ten minutes to put in the rest of this if I can. So let's give this a shot. Now we will we will put in. I'm going to go for the easiest thing. I like to just let's get the easy stuff out the way first. Now, what's dark? Now, sort of in the beginning of this, in the beginning of this lesson, 
I showed you a technique that I use, not a technique, but sort of a process that I go through when I first look at a painting. And I want you to look at the reference picture and I want you to tell me which areas are, are, the, are the areas of shadows or areas of darkness. Um, and, and this is a good way to train your eyes to identify that because often we look at a, a reference picture and we don't even need to think about it. But as painters, we must be more wary of um, tones. Okay, so that's pretty dark underneath the rooftop here. And it's pretty dark, so I'm going to go in. There's some bits and pieces there as well that, uh, what do you call, uh, I don't know what they are, but there, there are little bits and pieces of these white marks in there. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get those in because I think I can actually do that with some gouache later on. So why fuss around? Why fuss around too much? And I can just focus on getting in um, some of these darks and things first. So a bit of darkness there. Um, that line there kind of bugs me. We'll carry that down a bit like this. There, just This is just a bit of neutral tint and some brown mixed in here, okay? Just that darkness underneath the rooftop, it's, it's actually darker than that. It's kind of this color, okay, there. Also, at the same time, we can go ahead and do some of the um, trees and things at the back. So, look, that's, again, a bit of darker sort of brown. And I can drop in some more color like that. It's a neutral tint and a bit of brown mixed through. We've got this area here. This is dark, very dark as well behind um, the door. Okay, so I'm going to just get in a bit of that there. Okay, leave the light on the door. That's the biggest part that we want to preserve. This area here, all that stuff in there, we want to leave that um, for later. And uh, yeah, a lot of this stuff just kind of blends downwards um, into... You know, it's almost like a bit of a shadow area up the top that comes down a little bit, even on top of the doors. You can see the doors start off a little bit um, darker up the top like that and uh, then continue down. So, you know, a bit of this stuff here, a bit of that, that brown, um, even behind here, I think I'll add in a bit more color, a bit of darkness so that I can join this onto the, um, to make it part of this whole structure. So a bit more of that brown there. And by making it darker, it's going to bring it forward more as well. So that's my kind of aim with this, why I'm doing it and why I'm doing it this way. So, you know, here we got some trees and, and that. And you might think, Jesus, this is really dark. You, you know, this is, uh, this is a bit much, but it's, um, it's kind of what we have to do because... Um, it, it, at the moment, it's all just the same. Everything's just the same tone, and it's very boring. Okay, another thing it's going to do is also bring out the figures. Notice a lot of these figures are, you know, fairly light down the front. So we want to darken some areas at the back so that it contrasts uh, with them. This one should go down more, kind of like here. There. Um, that secondary layer is so important, okay? But notice as well that I'm not like keeping this same mix all the way through. You know, at some areas that's darker, some areas it's lighter, um, to try to indicate, it's just a, a quick way to indicate some of the uh, textures on the tree. Not all gonna be the same tone and, um, and, and you're gonna get little bits of mixing and stuff like that. Hey, look, there's even some of this stuff coming off, like, you know, just letting it do its thing. There, here's a bit more. A bit more here. Um, there we go. This comes up, joins on there, there. And I don't want to get rid of all this lovely uh, color as well, this beautiful orange in there. Such an amazing color. And to, to just avoid that, you got to have... It's like painting snow. In fact, I... Snow is another thing that I avoid, but I'm going to do one of these. I'm going to do a snow scene. And the reason why is because they can be tedious and they require a lot of self-control. Um, something which I'm a bit better with these days, but, you know, it wasn't always that way. <laughs> so here we go. We've, we've got a bit of this tree running across like that. Here we go. And um, I want to make it darker at the base and then slightly lighter at the top. 
but it's still going to be dark enough though. Okay? And you, you notice now it's starting, things are starting to come together. Um, if you don't mind me saying, I, I think it's starting to look a bit more uh, like what I want it to look like. Now, around the edges of the, the, the rooftop as well, one thing I'm trying to do is darken a bit. Um, just dab some areas like that as well. I don't want it to look all the same. But look how I'm cutting around some areas of the rooftop. I kind of like this area here. I don't know if I'll get rid of it or not. Maybe a bit. Let's just, let's just do something here. I don't know, something like this. <laughs> um, I actually quite like that bit of area of light. But um, I'll put in some slight little trees and stuff. And, and look at that, the, the branches here are lighter than the branches in front. That's how you imply some depth in your paintings. And, and notice how I also didn't do all this work with the pen before. I, you know, you, the, the pen work is important. Certainly the, one of the most important parts of, of this because it's always going to show through. But you want to leave stuff uh, that you can do in watercolors because you can't do this in pen. You can't get these light little soft things in the background like that. So we use watercolor for, um, to its advantage and we'll use the pen to its advantage. That's why with line and wash, you have the combination of them. It sort of brings out the strengths in both mediums. It's a very, uh, it's a very unique sort of style. It's something that I used to, when I started painting, I used to just stay away from it because I thought it was, um, I don't know, in my mind it was weird, but I, I thought it was kind of like cheating because you're, um, you, you know, you're, you're drawing in all the details and a lot of it's not painting. But actually, um, if you look at what I'm doing, it's almost equal parts painting, equal parts, uh, e equal parts uh, drawing with the pen. So. Around this area, look, I, again, just very soft lines for the trees. If you're going to draw in any branches coming up like that and things like that running through, just be a squiggly, squiggly sort of lines. Cool. I'll leave that top, that area of the trees. Let's have a look here in the back now. There are some dark parts here as well in the trees. Uh, it really just depends how far you want to go with some of this stuff. Um, dark areas here there's a dark area here for these trees they sort of again I, I i like to put these in because they can draw a bit of contrast on that door again so you know here's a bit just a light wash very very light um because all the detail is already in there yeah so we just want to get a bit of that brown in in the in that section even these bits of uh, what do you call them? Plants and things here. You know, a bit of green there if you want. Tiny bit of green. Just let it settle in. But you don't want to put too much in there because it's uh, further back in the distance. It's going to look further back in the distance if we do it this way. Um, okay. I... Let's think. What else should we do? Um, it's almost done. It's almost done. A bit more into the the sky a tiny bit more into the into the sky so uh, sorry not the sky that the rooftop here and i'm picking up a bit of neutral tint a little bit of neutral tint that's it just a light wash of neutral tint put in some marks here on the roof like that just to get some areas of darkness in here okay i don't know this is probably probably a bit um clumsy but some little marks like this there hopefully we'll bring it forward to a, a tad um there just put in some little of those circular bits um there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff here in the roof a lot of detail i might even really uh Deceivingly, um, looks easy, but it's not. I want to simplify it down, just create darkness in some areas, bits of light on these two bits like that. Um, 
watercolors is like that. You're kind of building the detail up. And uh, I just know that has to be a little darker. Okay, a little bit in there. And um, let's have a look at the door. Can we improve the door a bit? So, hmm. I think I'll put in a bit of darkness here at the edge of the door, this sort of section. Let's try that. A bit of darkness there and here. Just to indicate more of that light coming through. And because uh, we've left a bit of light on the side of the door, just the, in, the inside bits like that. Um, and I'm going to try something a little bit funny. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to grab a flat brush. Gonna be okay. Yeah, we grab the flat brush, and I'm gonna pick up some kind of purplish paint, and I'll try to get in some kind of dry brush strokes. I don't know if this is how well this is gonna work. Okay, there's a bit there. Just some downward brush strokes um, for some of these figures and 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 things. So look, there, there's a bit there. I don't know. Let me just take a look at it from a distance. I think it looks okay. Um, something like that. A bit there. Just a few little dry brush strokes running through. Um, but these figures here at the bottom, that's kind of... I wanted to do this so that I could... Yeah, just get in a, a little kind of indication of a shadow, I suppose, down the bottom. Another thing it does is also merges uh, the top and the bottom because we've got all these vertical shapes here. What's here on the ground? See, this looks okay. This here needs something. It needs something to balance out. So maybe a bit here like that. I don't know, for these trees, uh, that. Uh, let's have a look. very subtle sort of bits and pieces um you know if you really want to as well you can start coloring in some of these blocks on the ground a little different color slightly different color so you know that one there here for example there you know shadow underneath this step or whatever it is oops too much there okay all I know is that there's something, it just needs uh, a bit more in here um, to balance it out because the rest of it looks too busy. So some of this will help balance it out like that. Okay. And I'll look, I'll probably go into it later and um, redo some parts, some bits and pieces, uh, darken, you know, as usual, just darken off some areas as usual. Another thing that I, I, I want to do is um, the figures, the, the legs of the figures, perhaps, oops, too obvious just a little little directional lines that's, that's what i'm doing here that one was just off on a on the wrong angle it'd be more like this oops okay the, the the legs um i think i'll just add in some tiny bit of a bit more color a bit of neutral tint so i can bring this forward more there we go oh a bit of neutral tint in there that I hope that looks all right um what do you guys think has it worked out uh does it look okay <laughs> i sound very concerned there but i'm, I'm not um I, I think i'll take off the tape and um let's see what it what it looks like without the tape um yeah say about 85 percent finish maybe 90 percent finish with a few little highlights and things i can add in afterwards and uh, let me just take off this side. Is it? Yep. I don't like using tape, but you know this is one of the the most rewarding bits when you have the tape on. You get this nice little border on the edge. Um, but yeah, putting it on has always been slightly annoying for me. Uh, there we go. So that's a little scene. Quick little scene. I'm going to turn on the light. Um, in my apartment again, it's getting pretty dark. So uh, if you have any questions, pop that in. And uh, when I get back, we're going to start the second one.
Okay. And look at the comments. Um so, uh, yeah, that says thanks again for the tips, Darren. Love the happy colours you've used. Yeah, they're very very vibrant. It's um the the the, the colours I've used here is is, is uh, super exaggerated. I don't normally paint like this actually, but uh, sometimes you know sometimes it's good to try something different probably you should have left a bit more of the the uh, white of the paper here or just um, gone lighter in here to again emphasize that um air in the back another thing you can do is you can actually later on down the track you can go in with a bit of water and um lift out some color like this i got a little uh tissue just some you know, just a little bit of clean water in here, like that. Dab that area on the with the paper, like that, and, and look at that. You can lift off, and lift off some, like that, um, and maybe get a bit of that lighter area there in the back as well. So you can always do this, even if the paper is completely dried. Same here. Go in there and do add some more um, branches, sort of thing. Um, Look, there is a few more comments. More comments in here. Um, Lindsay says, "Yay, <laughs> must um, you must be happy with yours then, Lindsay." Valerie says, "Still around, uh, Darren? What are you? Twenty? Um, no, I'm not twenty. Certainly um, far from it now. But uh, you know, I I'm I'm doing all right. <laughs> doing enough energy." It's, uh, and Maggie says, uh, woohoo, that would be lovely to watch you live. Awesome. Um, yeah, once, uh, yeah, once I can organize, I'll, I'll try to organize something later on down the track for those of you who are interested in, in Melbourne. Um, I'm, yeah, I, I'm looking at doing some, some, uh, some classes also in Melbourne at some stage. Just got to figure out how to do it. The uh, Valerie says, the pants on your figures look fine shifts the focus back to underneath the arch yeah it like i always think about how am i gonna um, balance things out and um you know if we didn't have these figures here i think the focal point would just be this section and uh, some of the shadows and then here and then sort of this all these trees and stuff but because we've got it here your eye kind of moves around in a circle which i like um Focus just shifts around. Uh, there's a few things I can add in. A bit of dark areas. Um, Valerie says something else. Do you tend to choose a non-staining paint so that you can lift it, uh, lift it easily if necessary? Yeah. So the, the paints that I'm using here, most of them are, are non-staining. They're, they're Mijello paints. I've also got some Schmincke paints uh, too. I'm not sure which ones are staining or not. I think even with the staining paints, you can lift out a little bit. But um, yeah, obviously it's a, it's a bit harder. Uh, it's a little bit harder. You kind of got to scrub a bit more on the on the paper. Um, but it is possible. You're never going to recover the 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 white of the paper. Um, but you can certainly um, certainly put some water in there, scrub a little bit, and then lift off. If you're using 100% cotton paper as well, it makes it a lot easier. Um, a few more comments in Facebook. So um, Thea Thea Hayes says look. Great. Thank you, Thea. And Marianne Levy says, yes, please, I'm in Melbourne and would love to go to the gardens in the city and paint. Sweet. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I'll organize something. I'll organize something at, at one stage. There's some group that I made on Facebook as well just to get people in there who are interested. Um, I can't remember what it was called. I think it's Melbourne Plain Air Painters or something, but I'll, I'll change the name to maybe Melbourne uh, Watercolor Painters. <laughs> so... Yeah, have a look. It's I'll send you a link later. But let's go ahead and get started on the next one. Um, and and how are you all doing? How how are you uh, progressing so far? How's you how's your paintings? And you happy with uh, with 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 how it's how yours uh, have turned out? 
let me know in the in the comments. I've got a real big bit of paper now. Uh, usually when I do these larger, uh, when I do watercolor scenes, I, I will paint on a quarter sheet. It just makes it easier, like funny enough to, to actually draw everything in. Um, let me just shift this. I don't know if we can get this to fit. There we go. And it'll be just manages to get through. I'll just move the light a little bit. All right. It's kind of hard when you're using um, big bits of paper. It just manages to um, just manages to fit on the camera, which is great. Okay. Change the reference photo a bit as well to um, what have we got? There we go. That is it. That's the uh, that Melbourne scene that we all over in Melbourne are, f are familiar with. Whoops. Uh, cool. Okay, the, the reference picture is uploaded somewhere. Um, in the if you look at the comments, I've I've linked it so you can um, pick that one up as well. Um, but I'm going to get started, and uh, we will um start drawing need a pencil for this it's a night scene it's a night scene in melbourne i haven't done one of these before um not, not a melbourne night scene anyway i've done other night scenes so we're just going to get straight into it yeah um now i want to put in the base Now this is flinders street station it's a very iconic sort of area um over here in melbourne and uh, you know we've got the the base here. It's kind of about let's say a third of the way up the paper, maybe a bit less than a third of the way up. So it goes in kind of like this, the edge, and then we've got part of the um, air of it that sort of goes out to that side. And you know we've got the center of it. It's really right smack bang in the in the middle. And um, normally I wouldn't. Put it smack bang in the middle. I probably shift it along to the left, but I quite like this scene. I, I'll just paint it as it is, and uh, I will add some figures perhaps down here as well. Some something, just a couple of figures maybe closer in the foreground. Try not to get them, uh, make them look like you're going to get hit by this car. Uh, so probably the easiest thing, like I said, is to put in that horizon line, um, the base of the buildings, and then that, from there you can do everything else. Now the uh, front of it kind of look. I'm just start drawing some a basic kind of square for the base. Okay, then we've got a kind of uh, oops, it goes up actually all the way a little bit further, like here. Good thing about pencil is that um, very forgiving. You don't have to um, bother too much. The line isn't in you know the right place. Just restate the line. I do that with the watercolors anyway, uh, with the pen anyway, but, um, you know, one thing that's different is I, I think the, um, it, it, let me just put that in. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I thought I'd kind of drawn that dome a little bit too high, uh, a little bit too low. So this is, look at that, it's just a square or kind of rectangular shape. Then we've got a triangle on top. What have we got on top here? We've got a dome, which is basically a semicircle. We, if we simplify it, a little bit more than that we've got a line coming up here then we've got this in here it's kind of got a hexagonal base this building with bits attached to it there's this sort of section there there and a kind of a circular thing i don't know what that is um what are these two little another bits here on the side like that there we go um on the edge i'm really kind of scribbling in bits and pieces then we got the dome there oops the dome here you have these sort of sections, parts of it like that. There we go. That looks like a dome, doesn't it? And then the top of it, it's kind of like a, you know, like a, a, a pumpkin. It reminds me of like a pumpkin. And that could be the stem or something. And then it has a triangle up like that. And I know there's a flag. I know there's a, a flag sort of coming off the top there like that. I'll put, that, put it in. Put it in flag and this is looking okay um uh now we'll, we'll go and you know we've got a circle here that's the clock here there's more little little bits of details that you can start 
um, emphasizing the edges here, like that. Um, we've got these four windows one, uh, two, we've got three, four. They're just squares underneath, four squares underneath this circle for the clock. There, okay. I'm, I'm not aiming for complete accuracy here, um, just for just a reference. Um, also to save me if I, if I really stuff it up. Um, I can just call it an abstract. Uh, yeah, there we go. A bit of this bottom part. Now this also kind of semicircular shape, and it starts about kind of halfway through the whole. Um, yeah, it's, it kind of finishes halfway through the whole structure from the tip of this triangle to the base. The semicircle area finishes around about here. I'm gonna just. Use that as a bit of a reference there, there. Carry this down to the ground like this. Um, that. Okay. There's a bit of that area there. Down. Okay. Got figures and people just like crowded. It's a crowded train station. So there's people all walking around and doing things here. You know. Just drawn in a few here, something like that, making them a bit larger than in the photograph as well. Um, another thing is that we've got cars. There's a car here. Um, you know, maybe look, you can get the back of the car, front of the car, like this. There, there's a back of the car, another wheel, wheel, another wheel here. There we go. The side of a car, sort of looks like a car. Maybe put more of that front part of it on. There. Um, okay. Not the best car I've drawn, but it's definitely a car. Uh, now I'm going to focus on the buildings now. Let's simplify this down. There's, uh, if, um, you looked at, at this middle central section here. The left and right, we've got another rectangle. Kind of goes up, goes down like this. Left. Left there, it comes down like that. There we go. Oops, kind of off in an angle like this. Um, some bits of this railing like that. Um, comes towards the side. More railing. Uh, there we go. This comes down like this. Okay. We've got another dome here. The dome of uh. Any shape one. There. Oops. Kind of more like this, actually. And then here. There. One comes down. Kind of this side of the station. Like that. Um, the railing here is important. I'm going to get in a few more of these. That. And um, some of these uh, right sections, too. There we go. Now, having a look at them, look a bit, um, looks slightly off, but I think the, the general idea is there. And, and um, you, you later when you paint, this is when you can sort of figure it out along the way and correct bits and pieces. Uh, now, there there is a kind of structure inside here, kind of like a bunch of windows there. We'll put in some of those windows, just a kind of a shape like that. There's an area here, kind of the side. Um, there, there's a, in the same sort of structure here. One, two, I like that. What's on this side? We've also got the same sort of deal. One, and, uh, well, there's bits and pieces in here that I, I'm not going to bother to get in. But at the bottom, it's, there's a lot of darkness in this section, which is going to be good to get in later. Um, let's get a general line running down the page like this to the edge. And then um, finish it off. And we've also got the clock tower here. There, let's put it in. It's just a rectangle going up like this. There's the face of the clock. These two sort of sections like that. I'm just saying the tip, the top of the tower kind of finishes at the base of this one. So something like this. 
do that. Uh, I'll have to bring this up a bit actually. It looks too. There we go. There. You can work it out a bit later, but I think that's kind of in the right location. Okay. Um, what we got in the background? We've got all these trees and all this stuff. We've even got like a light pole or something like that there as well. I'm just running across like this. Okay. I'll just put one of them in to signify where uh, signify where, where a light pole is. A couple running down the street like this. Yeah. There we go. Keep things interesting. It's where we can also start putting in cars. Now there's a this red car here in the front. Um, it's a Ute. That front of the car coming out like this. Um, a couple of lights, grill, the bottom part of the car here. We've got like this larger wheel here, a wheel here. Um, it's not probably the most accurate uh, ute or whatever, but it's kind of stylized. Um, there we go. The more the more time you spend on the drawing as well, I I do find um, you know better accuracy you can get with shapes of the the cars and everything so um don't feel like you you have to rush um rush everything um for sure uh, you know we can also get in you know for example i might get in a car here that i'm just making this up uh there that could be a, a car shape this over here. Um, there are a few cars. Something just looks a bit odd about this one. I think that the the tire is just in the wrong place. It should be further back. That's why my rays are out. Uh, where's that tire? It should be near the back of the car. Otherwise, it's going to tip over. Something like that. That looks better. Okay, it's a bit better. Uh, some more cars. There's one here. There. Yeah. Simplify. Just a box on wheels. Actually, further down the back, I'm. I'm not. I don't want to spend too much time on them. And then as we move back further, they just all become more box shaped and um, you can't see the sides of them. Just something like that, I think, should do the trick. Um, maybe have some shapes wedged in between. There we go. Um, let me just get the, the front of this car out properly. It's looking like it's facing the wrong way. It's facing um, driving backwards into traffic. Not too, not too happy with this one as well. Just redo it quickly. Okay, a bit better. Uh, some figures, of course. Maybe they are walking across the road simple uh, figures and um there's a leg here's another leg there and then we can have another another figure here on the left maybe just cutting in front of that car a bit and um it's maybe they're holding hands and they're walking across the road um there's one leg and have the other leg kind of coming in like this. Oops. Change that up a little bit. Mm, you're trying to decide which way these people are facing. Perhaps they'll be going in. They'll be going into the scene. They'll be walking in. A bit better. Walking through. Walking through the scene. I don't want to put any other figures here. I don't know. 
Um, probably not. I keep it simple. Probably not. Should be some figure here walking across the road. Um, this one here is just sort of standing um, sideways here as well. Maybe this person is just walking as well. Got a funny, funny walk. Uh, the rooftop of this area here just needs to be put in there. Um, very simply, it comes all the way out there disappears off to the left underneath these sections there are these kind of um you call them pillars little pillars that yeah but i put another car here maybe maybe another car just behind there we go disappears off so you can't really see the other tire but it's certainly there tailgating this car um go a bit darker if you want as well don't worry we'll be cutting around these shapes and figures um i don't know i i reckon you know what i reckon i might leave a lot of this um in the foreground it will get too busy if i sort of fiddle too much this is a building, I think that's the, um, I can't remember the name of that building. Tallest building in Melbourne, I think. And then some of that, some of that detail, doesn't matter. It's all going to be the same color once I go through uh, afterwards. We're going to cut around actually bits and pieces. Uh, alrighty, there is a building here in the background. There, there. And down like this. This is another building, another building that China just comes out here. That there. Yeah. Yeah. Oops, not low wide enough so we're here. There. Don't worry all too much about the details of this now. If, uh, not really explaining it that that much, but just the silhouette of the buildings in the background. The stuff in the foreground is just more important. Um, what am I doing? Just trying to outline this a bit extra. That's what I was. The whole idea is to, in case it disappears under that wash, um, I don't want it all to um, disappear and then suddenly be panicking where everything is. Uh, this area, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. Now, we just want to indicate, right? We just want to indicate, uh, the roof, bits of railing. There is a, kind of, a, another tower here. A, a little, yeah, one like that. Another one here like that. This is really basic stuff. Um, a lot of this stuff underneath here as well, there's going to be some darkness underneath the buildings in here. Under, underneath here. I'm going to just quickly gate a little bit there. I have to forget this figure as well. Remind myself to keep that area kind of dark. I think we may be ready to, to give this a crack. Okay, that's how simple I'll sort of sketch in with this one. Um, how are we all doing? We are doing it's uh it's been a little bit quiet in the in the the comments but uh it's eight o'clock and i will let's aim to get this one finished i might aim to get this one finished by maybe nine ish a little bit after um fantastic and uh, sim is saying sketching is done but i'll but the water part i'll do later i think okay i think sim's talking about the previous one uh have a look at the uh, youtube chats as well Okay, Maggie. Maggie says this is my favorite so far, and I've been following you for three weeks now. Awesome. Um, was it was it the fact that it was a uh was it was it the 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 gate scene and just it was a bit easier to tackle or the colors? What made it? Um, what did you like about it? The F Arts asking, what is the size of the big one? Yeah, the the, the big one. This one here is a. Quite Quarter sheet, 
quarter sheet. It's almost A3 size. And the paper I'm using is a brand called Balhong. So it's kind of just a new paper that, that, that's come out in Australia. Um, I, I just got a whole packet of it, 10, 10 bits. The brand doesn't matter all that much. It's just the quality. So if you, you know, for scenes like this really helps you if you have 100% cotton paper, cotton watercolor paper. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'd aim for. If you don't have that, just use what you can, you, the best stuff you can afford. And you can look at any other comments over on Facebook, and there might be a few more. So switching between windows. Ooh. I think with Myrtle says, uh, this is exciting. I've always wanted to paint Flinders Station. This is uh, this very side of it, but never knew how to. Now you just made my dream come true. <laughs> awesome. Um, I hope I hope this turns out well, Myrtle. So <laughs> bit of pressure. Pressure's on, but that's good. Uh, I I'm sure it will look something like the reference, um, a loose version of it anyway. Natalie says, lovely color mixes for the first pick. Enjoying this one too. My Video is nearly uh, mute and can't comment too much um, as I'm work. No worries, uh, Lee. Um, Thea says only watching. I think that's about it. About uh, that's about that's about it. I'll continue just checking. Continue just checking the chats. Um, but we're gonna get we're gonna get on with this one and start doing uh, the colors. Fun bit, the watercolor painting. Um, let me just increase the size of the photo on my screen. Okay, now what I want to do first is get on all the bright areas, and I, I'm kind of wanting to exaggerate this. It is a nocturne sort of scene, so um, the area of the the sky, like I, I may, I think I'll darken it just a little bit. Um, it's quite a complex scene now that I now now that I think about it because we've got areas here on the right hand side as well which are quite, kind of darker than the sky, um, if you look very closely. So there's a few there's a few decisions I have to make. Do I create that same effect? Um, you know, do I get the sky in a little bit lighter than the buildings here in the back? I definitely want to keep the light here on the building, the reflections on the ground, the headlights of the cars. Um, all these like vertical reflections running down the page. I really want to keep those. It's just this section at the back. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, not not a hundred percent sure, but um, I think I think let's I think let's just try to replicate what's going on in the in the reference because if I put too much light over on this side, I think it's gonna overpower the scene. In terms of um, you know we've got all this light here, I want the reflections and the light of this building to to be the focus rather than some of the stuff on the back. So I think we'll stick with what's what's here. Just a little bit of my thought process in terms of how I approach it. And um, I've got a number ten, number ten round brush, and I'm just going to drop in some yellow just like this. Remember, for this stage of the painting, all we want is colors in there, just basic colors. Um, especially all the, the, the lighter colors too. And th this is a tricky part of the, the painting, especially as we move on later, because I'm going to have to drop in darks um, to blend in with the yellows as well. So I'm um, just going to put in some of this. And, and the good thing is, you know, all this stuff is also uh, quite transparent, you know, this this wash. So you don't want too much... Um, too much uh, darkness in this area. I'm leaving in a bit area here as, as well because I do want that to um, mix in with a bit of blue or something like that um, later perhaps. So just leaving the top of those domes, um, the bit of white there on the paper. But really for the rest of it, I'm just gonna go in and, and drop in a bit of lemon yellow, a bit of yellow ochre as well, because this is very, you know, this is very saturated, bit of yellow ochre down the bottom, we'll just mute uh, mute this color down a bit. So see, just a bit of that. But on the top, very vibrant, even on the sides here like that. So um, yeah, 
So we're going to just paint this light all on, on here like that. Um, and we've also got, uh, what have we got here? We have uh, some of this, some of these um, shades and things. I, I'll actually put in, I'll actually put in a bit of cerulean, just a, a light wash of blue. Some of these buildings here, I'm going to go over them again. And, and look, it's going to, it's certainly going to blend. Um, there's no way that you can avoid any of this blending. Uh, but that's okay. You, you know, we will make do with it. And um, I, I, I've learned, I've learned to just basically go with, um, just blend, let it do what it's, uh, what it wants to do. And, um, you know, add in a bit of blue, a bit more blue purple or something like that just the cool colors in the background like that um should we put in a bit more of this yellow here at the base yeah okay and the risk always at this point is like um everything kind of turns it's a green sort of color i don't want that to happen so i'm using a lot of neutral tint as well uh, to try to avoid that so that i can get some darks in here but it's not going to be a situation where we have um, we're just overwhelmed with the colors running through here so I'm using quite a limited color palette really it's just yellows couple of couple of yellows and the rest is just neutral tint um, and maybe a teeny bit of blue mixed in with the neutral tint um, I do have some cerulean blue in there which I can mix in with the neutral tint that might sort of just create a muted down sort of blue here at the bottom, the base, look at that, just a little bit of color there. Now at the top of the, at the top, let's just try, put in some of this neutral tint, like that. Um, if I can grab a smaller brush as well, that would help out a bit more. A little bit of this, a little bit of this brush, like that. Drop that in here. Oops, it's kind of a stuffed up that dome a bit more. Re you jig that a bit there okay it's all blending in coming down like this which is nice um got the paper completely flat as well probably should put it on a slight um slant actually so that some of this travels down I'm just gonna grab a palette there. one of my other palettes just chuck that on like that let's check the camera to see if you can see um a little bit there's a little, a little bit of a glare on the paper I, that should disappear as um as i continue painting so you know, some of this is coming down and don't worry too much about all this mixing about okay oh damn lost the reference hang on open it up again you know, don't don't worry too much about the uh mixing downwards um i want that to happen now same thing goes for this left side maybe like a cooler color a bit of like a maybe like a purplish purplish sort of neutral tint just drop that in there like that same with this one here um pretty pretty dark still like that okay just outline a bit of that dome like that um now this building here in the background again i'm just going to pick up perhaps some uh a little bit of cerulean blue drop that in for that background building like this get in a bit of that uh, color for that building um you know look, some of it's going to blend but I'll, I'll, I'll leave most of it this area here, that little highlight leaves that bit of white highlight there as well. Okay, oops, one thing I've forgotten to do is just the top of this um, top of this section. Just pop that in quickly before it all dries. Um, that. Mm, bit of this. Uh, Flag as well. Fortunately, I haven't got it completely straight. It's often a, a 
on a little angle. Let me try to fix that up. Now, um, perhaps a bit of blue. Indicate that Australian flag, just a bit of blue. Dull that down a bit, actually, with some neutral tint. And uh, just something like this. I reckon I'll redo it afterwards. Uh, fantastic. Now I'm going to use this, uh, you know, this yellow ochre, just dull down and get into that right hand side. And also, what I'll do is just spray down some of the areas here. I don't, I don't want that to dry off completely yet. So just a bit of that. It's really just um, neutral tint with a bit of yellow ochre. Something like this. I remember uh, I was in lockdown just before lockdown, actually. Um, it would have been just before just before the last, uh, the first lockdown that we ever had. Um, lady, I did a scene kind of similar to this and um, bought it off me. And uh, quite like that one. It, it was more of a scene looking straight down Flinders Street rather than the station. But it did have part of the station on there as well. Bit of a bit more yellow ochre. Notice how dull down and um, you know it, it, it's not a, a super attractive color here on the right hand side. But I don't want it to be. I just want it to um, be an indication of what's there. In fact, this tower is too big. A bit too big. Um, perhaps may have to go back into it afterwards. Just trying my best to to get it in. Um, as much as I can now, so I don't have to do that. Because um, I want this to be uh, darker than the sky. Sure. That. Okay. I want that to be darker than the sky. This area too, there's a bit of a blue sort of um, roof up there like that. And maybe a bit of that in there as well would be nice. Doesn't really look like much at the moment yet, yeah? but um, I think afterwards it should be okay. Just start looking like something. While well, everything's still wet, this is really like a, a great time to go in and start doing uh, the the bits and pieces of the sky, so that we get some blending here and there. It's not just uh, just not not this dead shape um, running through uh, this the sky. I want it to mix in there. So I'll go ahead and pick up. So this is my large uh, large brush, large mop brush, and um, let's get in. Let's get in some uh, blue, a bit of cerulean blue, like that. I want it to be darker though. Um, mix a bit of cerulean plus the bit of neutral tint there. Let's have a try. Blue plus neutral tint. Remember, this is a night scene, so I do need to kind of emphasize the, the sky a bit. Uh, well, in terms of I've got to make it darker, don't I? So. But I tend to, I sometimes forget what I'm painting. If I'm not careful. Now this area at the back is going to be lighter, um, but really for lot for a lot of it, it's just going to be the same color. Especially here on the left hand side, um, you know, I'm just going to go in, get in a light wash. But this wash is still going to be, it's not going to be a daytime sort of looking scene here. It's kind of. Uh, you know, usually when you're doing a daytime scene, you're going to have a lot more uh, white and that running through. You're not going to have that here. Sort of lighter air of the sky. Um, let's bring this down. And, and this is why I've tilted that paper a little bit as well, so that I can... Uh, yeah, I can basically um, get this effect of the water moving downwards. Okay. I'm going to cut around some of these bits. You know, that's the uh, the roof. Tower. Uh, oops. Station. Um, just a bit of that. If it blends in places, that's good. I, I want that to happen, actually, in some areas. Okay, just have a look around, see if it's uh, making sense or not. You know, some of that just creeping in, just let it do its thing. But on some places, you also just want to let it uh, have a kind of white edge. If you can see on some bits, I've left some 
kind of white edges and areas. Um, it's just still to darken this down. For example, here, um, you know, I don't want it to completely mix in, but you know, left some little white edges and areas like that. But here, you know, I may get it to mix in a bit more. Okay, that there. Just sort out this left hand side. Or I forget about it. There, there. Kind of more saturated actually on the left. I accidentally made it too saturated on the left, but we'll continue on. It's it's really just a cool color. I don't even know what color this is. Combination of some blues and some neutral tint. I don't want it to be too vibrant so that it um, detracts from the rest of the painting. Okay, a bit more water in there. I just wanted some more, a bit more darkness. Now, never know how exactly this is going to dry, but um, certainly it's going to dry lighter than what it is at the moment. So, um, while you can, while you can, just drop in some color, some darkness, especially at the top of the page. Feel that's a good place to put it. Okay, maybe it's just past sunset. The lights and things have started to turn on. Okay. There we go. Alrighty. It's looking okay. Um, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to move down further. And over here. We'll put in things like the cars, the colors of the cars, but mainly we want this reflection, nice reflection of the, um, we call it the station. So I will pick up some little bit of uh, yellow again, uh, lemon yellow. I'm just going to spray that a little. It, it's kind of. Um, just pick a bit of that up. Uh, so lemon yellow again to reflect what's going on up the top, and also some a tiny bit of ye uh, yellow ochre, because it's still kind of dull, isn't it? It's not really as vibrant as that. I don't want it to compete with that. Um, we've also got some tail lights, uh, that kind of thing. You know, bit of color here like that. Um, the paper there, you know, a bit of this going on um, here as well. You know, just yellow bits running down the page. Um, keep it nice and light, nice and light. Um, I'm just running vertically like this. And for those of you who did my other class the other day, where we did. Um, a night scene of Allstat. You notice the technique I'm using here is pretty similar. Pretty much the same thing. The yellow. The yellow back there. More yellow here. That. Um, these, these cars as well, we want some yellow running down for the, the lights. That, that, like this. Okay. Bit of that running down. Um, I'm going to let this sort of dry for a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Important to get in these verticals, um, especially near to the uh this middle section here okay then we're going to drop in we're going to drop in some um bits and pieces and i mean when i what i mean by bits and pieces is basically the um all the colors all the 
the ground. Uh, I think we still need to wait a little bit for that. While that's happening, I can just actually um, you know, put in colors for the cars, something like that. That can be that red car there, and um, using quite a thick paint for this one because it's closer, like this. Okay, a little bit of runniness is fine too. Don't worry. Like that. Bit on top of the roof, like this, sort of joining up. Okay, yeah. Um, now this is running. This is running a little bit. Um, lift off a bit, but um, honestly, not a there's one. Um, there's a car here as well, and um, the, the good thing is, you know, when we're playing around with different color combinations, we can start using stuff like blues and things now. So that car can be blue, um, or a kind of purple color, like that. Um, later on, I'll go through and get the windows in with a darker color. Um, same goes for this car here. I will get those windows in in a, in a slightly darker color. Uh, while I can, let's put in some of that yellow here for the headlights. It's going to completely blend in, but have some of those running down the page as that, like that as well. Like that. There. There. What have we got? We've got a car behind here. We can use like kind of a purplish color. I use like a purple sort of color like that for that car. As long as it's. I'm still keeping that yellow coming downwards. Okay. And um, a lot of this is just, just painting wet onto wet. I'm hoping it'll work out. Um, I, I think it will. Some more, maybe some blue, just a muted down blue or purple here. There we go, another another car, another car there. Okay. Don't take much to indicate what car really. Don't take much. I like that. One that's kind of more purplish looking behind. This. The, the windscreens are important to just leave on. Um, some of them I'll leave like that. Maybe with a bit of yellow running through the windscreens, like uh, perhaps. I mean, a lot of them are pretty dark, actually. It, it may even be possible to get that one in. Um, it's quite a dark color. I just use neutral tint. For example, and just drop that neutral tint in and just mix in a bit of blue to that neutral tint so it's not all the same color. Let's have a look, is it gonna stay? Maybe. Maybe. Here we go. Bit of a window. Okay. Back end, like that, just a light indication of that window, and do it here as well. And the trick is just to leave, you know, I've left some little bits of white in there too. But it's not a huge deal, it's all just, they're all just shapes. Just squarish kind of looking shapes. That one I'll have to, I just had to detail a little bit more, it's closer to the front of the page. Um, while I've been sort of yapping away, this stuff is dried off. Rewet that. Rewet a bit. Um, figures I need to put in a bit of color too. These two figures here on the left, uh, some purple. I really want some purple here because we've got all this, uh, all this yellow here, you know. Complementary colors work really well. And there's another figure. Maybe I'll put some more blue 
in that figure. Yeah, so that it's just like a darker purple. Kind of overlapping. This figure is overlapping with the car a bit like that. Okay. There. There. But it's okay, just leave it. Let it let it do its thing. It took me a long time to sort of realize how to do figures and like these sort of loose landscapes. Just letting it doing it all in kind of one big wash like this. You gotta let things mix. Not not kind of freak out when it does mix. Um, now this is the interesting bit. We just got to put in the colors of the ground now. I'm going to be using neutral tint and just some uh, blue, neutral tint blue, which um, actually comes out to a kind of purplish color. But uh, I do want more kind of grays in there too. Let me just try to mix up some. The ground is pretty dark in areas anyway, so let, that's, let's test. Yeah, and then I'm just going to try with this brush, which is a flat brush. I'm going to stick with the flat brush. Easier. Okay, just picking up some of this mix and downwards, getting downward blush brush strokes. Right. Ooh, it's going to be difficult. No, let's just do it. There, center, drawing up in the middle like this, darkest middle. Um, there, there, there. Um, you're gonna have also bits of line work running through the ground like this. Just thinking of the the directional lines as well. Sort of running through the scene. Um, let's have a look there, 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 perhaps like that. Um, there, a bit of darkness. This is turned into a slight mess, but I I think it will dry okay once we get in um a little bit more detail later. Um, you can also spray a bit in there bit of a spray that soften it down a little you never 100 percent know how it's going to turn out when you do this but what i'm trying to do is preserve that yellow so when you notice when i'm going in i'm sort of trying to spend as little time as possible in those yellow sections and just trying to add in add in that color so that it um it mixes together yeah and I'm, I'm also just a lot of this is just neutral tint and a bit of uh a bit of blue purple i want to simplify this down a fair bit okay temptation here is to just keep going and to keep playing around and um Adding more colors, darkening areas, that sort of thing. Uh, but I know it's kind of around the time where I have to now be careful. Okay. Get a, let's get rid of a bit of this water at the bottom. Okay, a bit of this. Yeah. Having a look. Okay. Looking okay. Um, maybe a bit more neutral tint. In some of these areas, just a teeny bit. Okay, fantastic. So, um, I'm going to let this all dry, and we'll get back to it. We're going to add in all the the darks, but uh, pretty much um, the first wash is is done. And uh, we've, we, you know, I think I've achieved what I wanted to achieve, just getting the, the colors, the, the brightness of the, the buildings and the reflections onto the ground. Um, I think I've achieved that. So let's, uh, I'm going to give this a little dry and I will get back to, get back to it in a moment.
Righto. It's all dried now, and um, I think it, it, it kind of looks like something still. Uh, even just on its own like this, we can we can really um, really really like pick out a few bits and pieces. Uh, I like how that car's dried. Uh, we just gotta, gotta add some more little features on there to bring out all the details so that it looks uh, a little less abstract. Now, I'm gonna look over at the reference photo again, and and we uh, first thing I I want to do is get in some details for the buildings. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to start firstly with this dome on top of uh, the station and I'm picking out really just neutral tint, a bit of a neutral tint, okay. I'm going to finish this off really, um, really quickly as well. Uh, how's everyone going, by the way? Oh. Uh, there is, oh, there's a few comments. Um, anything with Myrtle says, loving it already with the first wash. Awesome. So far, so far, so good. Thea Hayes says, I love watching the transformation. Yeah, and, and it's having that preservation, um, uh, pres basically enduring through it and, um, you know, believing that something will turn out, um, will, will basically uh, come out of this uh, situation because, you know, often when you get to this stage of the painting, you think it's just, it doesn't look like anything and, um, it's very easy at this point to just uh, pack up and uh, call it a day, but there's, we're not going to do that. We're going to continue on and uh, because this painting is only half finished. So uh, there's a few, I think that's it. That's all the comments that there are, but let me know how you're doing if you're watching along. And uh, this is the most fun bit. I love doing this bit and it's also kind of stressful because you're, you, can, you only have one chance at it. We're getting in all the shadows and the darkness in here. So, you know, this area here, there's a, you know, a bit of shadow underneath that part of the building. There's a bit of shadow indicating the edges of um, you know, features on the building. This is why I kind of like to do all this stuff with the with the brush, because I know if I just draw it all in, I'm going to have to do it later. But the drawing is also very crucial because it's... Um, Especially if you're starting out, and I still have this issue, it's it can be difficult to picture what's there. It gives you a better better guideline of of what to do. So that just a bit of darkness there, and there's a bit of darkness here too on the top of this station. And uh, this section here, just this triangle there, runs runs over like that. Uh, and I think V's just joined us. Uh, good morning, V. V says, missed the entire section uh, session. I'm wondering, I'm wondering though, what color is that red? The red I'm using is just pyrrole red. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly the, but yeah, it's a pyrrole red, pyrrole red. Um, it doesn't granulate or anything like that. I think it's a staining color, but um, don't quote me on that, V. But good to see you. Good to see you here. V is one of my, my patrons. We've got a few sort of watch along as well uh, where they can um, and here we got a section of the dome it's kind of like sticking out the side there there um, there's this kind of shadow on the edge of the dome as well like this going up into the built into the dome there we've got a little little indications here of the structure of the dome which I really want to put in just some marks running down like this okay and some of the sections up the top like this as well i'm really going in pretty light guys but it's still um you know there's still enough there to indicate what's going on okay i redo this flag a bit and okay? just a bit of dry brush on the edge maybe just uh, a bit more rough like this okay and uh, I'm kind of liking how this is going at the moment. It's really just a, a matter of um, picking out little shadows and areas of darkness and things in here. Don't overdo it and skip, you know, skip over bits as well so that it's not all too uh, put together. Um, you see just bits of the areas where the, the brush skips, you know, you're kind of just drawing, you're just drawing with the brush. There's not as... Um, 
it really. Um, and even around the clock, there is another circle. Just goes around like that, and then we've got the windows and things which start here. Um, in some of the windows, this. The window here. Okay. Something. There. Mm, there. What else do we have? Um, it's of this one this time. I'm just gonna actually put in a little a little wash over the top there to indicate. Um, yeah, just a bit of light. Um, on the right hand side, slightly darker on the left for this one as well. Um, this one here is actually darker on the top. I'll indicate some of this, just darken up the top like that a little. Okay, and I'm hoping that also makes it stand out of the sky a, a little. Um, cool. Uh, this a bit more color in here um a bit more color yeah that's part of the side of that that building here as well there's some darkness in here in here as well so uh, i don't what i don't want to do is really just get caught up in trying to put all these everything in there okay this is a pick and true situation um even underneath here you know it it's all there's lots of light really in in the photograph but it may be the case that i have to get rid of some of that too so um you know for example a bit of this this one kind of overlaps here right so we can just darken a bit under the building like this and um Get in maybe some areas of darkness in in parts of it, like here, maybe just a little darker. There, we'll leave the roof. I like how that roof looks. Just a light wash of neutral tint. Um, I'm only using neutral tint at the moment just because it's easy. Uh, I don't have to mix any grays. I'm just using what I got. Um, oh, well, one thing that I need to do is get in those buildings there in the back which have a kind of um, bluish base to it as well. So a bit of neutral tint, a bit of blue. And um, let's try, let's get that in. Like this. <clears throat> and uh, I like that. Yeah. We're going to paint the whole thing in, but leave some white on there too. Cut around. And bring that down. Sort of cuts around the shapes as well. A little. Like that. Okay. That's all I want to kind of do. Um, for that. This, there's a couple other buildings. Oh, a bunch of other buildings here that will just uh, darken off. Uh, a like this. Cut around the yellows. This helps too bring out the uh, station okay make it a station to pop out a bit more and come cut across the place. get in some more of these buildings here on the left that that bring that down there um simplify these down the large shape at the back should do the trick, something like this. Maybe some verticals running down uh, like this, just to indicate the structure of this building, the little poles and stuff, eh? There, a little bit of the cover underneath the top of the building. Mm. Drop in a bit of water, 
places. Just encourage some um, bit of blooming to happen and bits and pieces. There we go. Something in there. It looks like there's a bit of. Um, it could be a section where you might just go. You know, let's try it. For example, if I just go with a bit of darkness like that, bring that up. That's probably a bit much. But uh, this then sort of then uh, gets that car to pop out a bit more like that. If it's too dark, just un, you know, just lift off a little bit. Continue. But I, I don't want to get rid of all this uh, lovely uh, color in here, this sort of yellows and stuff running through. So keep it. Um, yeah, keep it fairly light. These buildings, um, these buildings are okay. I'm not 100% pleased with the ones I'm making. Make do. do. Look, a, bit, a bit more cutting around here to get some extra, extra deep sharpness. Another thing that we need to do is, um, you know, these little railings here as well, they do form part of this structure. So I can pick up a smaller brush, smaller round brush, and um, go in and just do something like this. Not even, not even that much. Just a few little lines running down through the side like that. There. Um, good things with these these little brushes is you can now just kind of add in these little these small details like this. And you will notice even on the sides, there's these blocks that have this kind of pattern. So, you know, that's another option. You can go and do this, what I'm doing here as well. And just don't go too dark. Like that. It's a lot easier to, when you're using a smaller brush like this to get in those details. And there is also some warmth, the kind of like a burnt sienna maybe. And Sienna running through some of these areas there. Um, have a look down further. This area at the bottom. Draw that out a bit more. A bit of darker paint. Kind of the same paint as the stuff on top. And I'm just going to draw that like that. I say draw because it's uh, it's almost all this drawing really just with the brush. Um, and got this circle edge like this, and then it's running through that one go. It let it be done. A few bits running through crisscross patterns there. Um. Kinds of a lot of stuff running through here, but but the majority of it's not important. I mean, it already kind of looks like what I want it to look like. Um, it's just kind of now picking out um, some areas of contrast, areas of interest. Um, you know, you've got also like the other parts of the building, which also have this sort of line work on the. On the uh, the buildings indicate a bit like that too. There, this one kind of a bit running across like that. Yeah. Background like this. Background, I mean. There. Um, bit of color for the windows still. Um. Now I'm going to go and just darken some of this area here on the right hand side because I, I just want this to stick out more. Tiny bit. There. Okay, good. And um, straight underneath as well is where I'm going to start playing around with some um, darks underneath this uh, section the building. Um, yeah, where we've got... Uh, the bottom part, this. The 
a whole lot, just be careful. I'm going to darken that area at the at the bottom so that I've got uh, some a little bit more contrast on this on the car, especially this um this car here right at the front. Okay, good. Again, we can just detail in some of the the stuff on the buildings here on the the side. It's all dried anyway, so all you need to do is just um. Get in a few little separations. I'm not even looking at the reference picture really at this stage. Um, it's all just a bit of indication work. Um, a bit of a bit of darkness up there on the top. Um, good. Um, now the, the car, this is where we just got to be a bit more careful and um, start putting some of the details in for the cars. I'm going to just um, go in with some neutral tint and just drop some um, color in for the, for the wheels. Okay. Smaller brush. That. There's a wheel. One here at the back, maybe. There. Um, one here underneath, like that. Some bits and pieces in the car as well. There's uh, little sections here and there. Windscreen. You can also drag some of this stuff down. I hope that. Um, blends blends uh, through a bit more okay normally you just you know got a car a bit of darkness underneath like that um you know some of these these darker bits in between here the light the, uh, the reflected bits of the light really help um, Okay. All right. A of indications here for the wheels of this car here in the distance. And uh, again, darken off some spots like that underneath to the back of the car as well. I do want to put in some just a darker section like that there and um just a simple downward uh oh actually i have done that okay just a little little bit of a reflection there kind of a rainy day and uh and really what i'm doing here is just again just um adding little bits and pieces of detail you know all the you know, even the windows and things and, um, you know, on the back end of the painting, these little windows here, I'm just going through and just um, putting in a few here and there. I'm looking at the reference, but at the same time, um, it's not a huge deal. Like, I'm not trying to replicate it exactly. I'm just trying to indicate that there's a row of buildings, a set of buildings there. Um, okay, and a, a clock tower the back um oops We just check the chats really, really. Need a big break. Um, so have a look. Um, 
a look on YouTube. Look on YouTube, what's going on? Phil says, uh, Phil says, uh, this, oh my God, this is so, so amazing. <laughs> Here's Phil. I'm, I'm liking this section at the moment, but in terms of like the rest of it, I, I'm really, I'm really hoping this will turn out okay in terms of these, this section here. Like I, I need to put in a bit more, um, probably a bit more detail on these figures and get in some more contrast with the light and dark areas. Um, I think it's looking okay. I think it's looking looking all right. Um, I do like this section the best though. Uh, it still needs a bit of work on, on that side. And um, yeah, perhaps uh, another thing I might do as well is even just re-wet a lot of this uh, this area and dark and further at the ground. But it, it may not be necessary really if I just get in some of these uh, vertical marks for the cars. I just feel like there's not enough. Um, there's just not enough uh, darks um, at the bottom yet. So I'm having a look, a look. Um, what else is there? V. Okay, the V's. The V's having a chat. V's saying uh, it's one of my better works. Um, I know painting landscapes is not your thing. If you heard, um, if I heard you right a few weeks ago, brilliant colors and tones you're using are amazing. Yes, it's that that first wash that's so important. Making sure that you get in all those um, bright colors, uh, it really makes such a difference. So the rest of this is just we need to put in some more verticals running down these, um, sort of bisecting some of the light here um, and the figures as well, that kind of thing. Maybe a little um, little reflection for some of those figures joining on too. Um, it's really quite a few things that, that we can that we can do and also some of the street lamps as well i think that will that will help um philip's asking how do you get the wash so bright and and vivid well i'm using pure pigment i'm just picking up the pigment straight from the the palette and just going onto the page like that so um i'm not doing much mixing with the yellows especially because my palette is just completely i mean i keep talking about this but my palette's just you know i never clean the thing <laughs> So I'll be crazy to go in there with the yellows. Uh, let's have a look. Um, it's really nice. So many comments and so many comments in here. Thanks for uh, sharing your your thoughts and um, questions. Um, have a look. V says, Darren, I see the colors in the reflections here. Wouldn't have those in normal daylight pictures, do you? feel the night scenes are challenging yeah i, I definitely um with night scenes in, in watercolors it's it's not something that i do all the the time um certainly it's certainly a challenge to keep bits of the the light um in areas it's almost like that first scene i did this one here where um you know, we're just trying to preserve this section there. I, I'm using that same technique kind of in, on this section as well. So you're really having to, um, yeah, especially in that first wash, you're really, really having to pay attention to how it dries and just trying to mix in colors without getting rid of all the background colors. So it's, it's a challenge, but, um, you know, it's always good to challenge. Having a look, a look. Um, Bill uh, Phillips says he's using Daniel Smith paints. Washes are nowhere near that vivid. I guess uh, that's the difference between me and the artist. Um, yeah, I think yeah. Just try using try using them off the palette. So just um, especially the the yellows, the uh, yellows make a big difference as well. So if you just pick them straight off and apply, um. You're able to get you're able to get a lot more vibrancy in there. Also, the uh, these paints, most of them are non-granulating paints that I'm using as well. I think these are Magello paints. I also have Daniel Smith paints, uh, Daniel Smith paints as well. It's just that I have a set of these Magello paints that I got a, a while a while back. So it's a, um, I want to make sure I use them as well. So um, yeah, they last such a long time. Um, it's amazing how long a a tube of these paints will last but i with that said i go through my blues 
um, like crazy. So definitely, I always have to replace my blues. It's just one of those one of those things, I guess. Um, I use them to to mix a lot of darks, and um, obviously, when you're doing darks, it's going to be a stronger concentration. So there's a bit of a shadow up here, actually, in there, in here. Um, you know, I'm just, just kind of fiddling around a bit to create extra uh, contrast and things. Okay. The details really at this stage start to make, um, make the painting. So. You know, we can just simplify even these figures here in the background. We can go just drop in a bit of color in there, simplify them down into smaller shapes and, and things, um, especially up here in the background where we don't want to um, put too much in there, you know, full of you know, legs and torso that does the trick. Like that. At the base here. Mm. Yep, yep. And here's another figure. You can even get a bit of gouache and add a add a tiny bit of gouache in like that. This is um gouache mixed with blue. A bit of the legs as well. Um I you darken these off slightly more like that. Um use some legs of this other other figure there in the background like that. Um you know. Just walking towards, walking towards us, and uh, still kind of battling with these cars. I'm not completely satisfied with how the cars are looking at the moment. I think they just they need some more, slightly more detailing in them. Um, okay. A little bit more detail on the rooftops and things here. There's a power here that I'll just darken off a bit. Um, window here. Right. Okay. These two figures here in the front, I'm going to need to do something to um, add them in here. I'm going to put a bit of, well, maybe that's maybe that's not right. Let's let's go in with some darker blue, like this. We just do have some gouache on here as well. So it's kind of turned into a um, it's going to turn into a nice sort of blue color like that. There, the one on the left, let's just darken up a bit maybe, like this. Some more neutral tints maybe in there and some uh, just a, a slight drop of warm warm color like this. Okay. And then I can just get in the legs pretty quick. Just drop them in. Neutral, neutral tint, I'm just gonna go there, connect them on. This they look like they're just walking into the scene. simply and you know having some i think some uh downward brushwork is also going to help i'm going to try to add in a few of those like this because it's going to indicate the um yeah just the the reflection basically on the ground um a little bit here for these ones but uh find that the the further back you go you don't have to really worry about it as much Perhaps a bit on this car here as well, just some indications of the wheels, sides of the car, and um, you know underneath the car as well, like that. There, um, same thing goes. Maybe a bit of darkness on the left-hand side of these cars would be good as well. Okay, I'm rid of that color. Uh, 
in red. Bit of red ahead. It's of these figures. Um, maybe a bit early, but I, I think I'll put in some directional lines. This uh, some lines running through the scene, like um, yeah. I'll stand up and do this actually. I want to put in a few light brush strokes, very light brush strokes uh, for some of these buildings in the background just to indicate some of the floors and that sort of thing as well. Like this there. There's some uh, horizontal lines now for this one. Maybe some here. More. They're just little, thick little. And lines like that. Um, it looks pretty simple at the moment. I, I feel that there's still a, few, uh, a bunch of things that I could that I could add in um, here and there. I think that's the gist of it, though. I mean, we've got um, you know, we've got some figures. We've got some um, you know, we've got some cars in here, and um, really. I'm thinking what else I could put in. Um, oh, you know, we could put in some. We could put in some of the uh, the lights, the street lamps. So, got some dark color. Just drawing in a lamp real quickly. That, and maybe a bigger one here. But something like that. Um, a couple more from that the distance there. Um, I should if I go down and just create some uh, reflections for these ones in the back as well, like that. I think that would be be better. Um, hmm. I think what's missing here is um, just some extra darks, and uh, I haven't a hundred percent quite figured this one out. Yeah, this one stumped me a little bit, actually. I have to say, it has slightly, uh, slightly stumped me. <laughs> um, I liked it better when it was just the first wash. And I think perhaps a teeny bit more detail and darkness in the buildings should really help with that. Um, where just areas that I can pick out here and there. It looks very soft, or areas of the buildings, especially in this section here, just quite soft areas that just need um, some more stronger edges uh, running through and um, creating a bit of contrast. And yeah, I like that. I think this looks a little bit better. Hmm. The buildings in the background are still should be a bit darker. Really just this whole process where I'm continually just trying to adjust and change around um, 
but I think that looks a little better, that side. More contrast in there. You know, we can get some hair in for some figures like that. Uh, you know, a yeah, bit of hair there for that one. You know, just helps to um, identify what's going on in these crowds of people. Um, bit of white gouache. Could have like a bag or something here. Just especially with the figures that are closer, I think um it does help to put extra details in like that. Um. And a tiny bit of I'll pick up some. Some uh, white gouache just in a different tube. And uh, just drop some of this here to finish it off, add a few highlights. A few highlights. Um, okay. Uh, let's try, I've got a, it's got a normal brush, a normal round brush. Um, there we go. Look, there's some, some lights. I don't know if we should do this even, but, um, you know, just a little bit of indication for the lights here. Um, and then we've got the people, uh, here, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of gouache on the shoulders. Um, near the head as well, just to indicate some, uh, like a highlight sort of thing. Um, even in these areas, I feel that we could benefit from just a few little marks and things running through this section. Um, here as well, maybe, you know, the, the buildings, like some of the, some of the areas will have, um, lights and the buildings, that sort of thing. Underneath here, there. Like that. Mm. There's this little bit of gouache running through. I don't want to do it all through the whole thing, but just in some areas, yeah. And, uh, I think I'll finish this one off. Um, I think this is looking, I think this looks okay. Uh, I feel like I really could have done this better. Um, like if I had my a chance to, to do it again, I would have painted most of the figures and most of the cars actually wet into wet. And then when the second, the second layer, I would have just uh, put a few outlines and things like that. I've done a similar scene to this, um, a London scene, which was a, a portrait style. And, um, the more of it that you paint in wet and wet in terms of all these reflections, the better it, it, it looks. But I do like, um, this is my favorite bit here, this, this um, dome and this section underneath. Um, there are some figures here. I think that looks nice, sort of walking, walking into the scene. I might, um, you know, take a look at it later and um, let it rest for a, a, a moment and come back to it um, off camera and see what else I can potentially add into it. Um, I think it's been a, it's a decent, it's a, certainly a decent attempt though. Um, I, just, I feel like I could certainly do it, do it better a second time round. Um, but it's a nice impressionistic uh, a scene of, of Melbourne. I think it's, you know, it certainly, certainly still looks like Melbourne. So uh let me just i'll just place these the two paintings here so that you can have a, a little look um that's the line and wash up on the corner let me just take off these um how is the quality the video quality um, camera looks a bit funny today 
That's all right. Um, let me just shift this around. I'm using a webcam. Um, oops. All right. So there we go. Um, those are the two scenes. Uh, I'm going to go through the comments. I haven't checked the comments for a while. Sorry, guys. Uh, been able to. I kind of got a bit lost. Um, lost painting for a moment there. Let's see. We have. Um, yeah, so Phillips, uh, so Matt R, there's a comment from Matt R. Says, Hi, I'm following you today uh, off and on. You make videos on sketching alone with pans, uh, with pans alone. I think it's different from the sketching you do for watercolor. Now, let me reread that again. Can you make videos on sketching alone with pens alone? Sorry, with pens alone. I think I need glasses or something. Yeah, um, I can give that a go. Certainly can give that a go. Might be a. Um, may, could you let me know like what you wanted me to cover? If I if I did a, a video on just sketching with pens, did you want? Um, in terms of like if I didn't color it in, I just I just um, used hatching techniques to darken off certain areas, um, that kind of thing. I think that's what you might mean. But uh, yeah, I can definitely do that. All you know, all my. Pen and wash uh, ones anyway start off that way with uh yeah definitely start off that way um let's have a look Philip says nice tip thank you i'll try using straight from the palette thanks yeah just when when you're when you're doing that um you, you know just make sure that you're also um you're altering the water the mixture of water when you're going in so if you're picking stuff off the pan um i sort of just still dunk my, my brush in the wa in the water funny enough and i'll apply it straight onto here maybe the the, the bottom bottom area because uh I don't, maybe i don't want it to be as bright as that so you can still do a little bit of sort of mixing in the water but just quickly picking up the paint dropping it a bit in the water and then going here or you might wet the page already sort of spray the page and then drop the paint in and then it will just dissipate and spread a, a lot better um so that's another option that, that you've got philip um v says any birds on the wire sleeping for the night oh, okay that's something i've forgotten to do um birds hey i don't know <laughs> i don't know how we'll do this one they could be they could be um you know sometimes you might have an odd bird here or there um let's have a look so, yeah, so Phil says I go through blue and uh, burnt umber like crazy. Yeah, and and you know you can use you can use burnt umber or raw umber with ultramarine ultramarine blue and just pretty much use those two colors to paint almost anything because um yeah just to get a either warm or a cool mix um yeah I've seen a lot of paintings done just in um yeah just um yeah burnt umber or raw umber plus ultramarine. And you can get a get a more vibrant yellow if you want to to sort of mix into that um, into that, but it uh, certainly works. I think if you use less colors as well, um, you know, it, it definitely makes it easier for you and uh, allows you to focus more on tone, which is uh, crucial. I think more so than color. Um, v says, do you use more blue tones in the shadows on these night scenes? Seems like the shadows are those. Uh, seems like the shadows are those tones maybe that adds uh, to a vibrancy yeah definitely so um i, I tr because like we've got all this yellow and all these warm colors in here so if i add in a bit of yeah just a bit of bluish uh, bluish gray into this mixture um it basically allows you to to contrast um contrast those hues more so so it's not an exact complementary but um, yeah, if I use the kind of warmer gray or something in these areas, I feel like it just wouldn't look as as vibrant. So um, you're contrasting uh, tones, so light and dark, and then you're also contrasting oppositional hues at the same time, and that certainly helps. Yvonne says, "Lovely painting. Uh, thank you, Yvonne. Thank you for for coming along." And uh, V says, "The birds are in the photo." Oh, hey, let, let me see. Maybe they are in the photo, hey? Like you've, you've got really good eyesight, V. I cannot, I cannot spot any birds in there. 
There's some uh, security cameras maybe on top of the buildings. Yeah. Um, Susan Truscott says, beautiful. Thank you, Susan. And uh, Myrtle had to leave, but she'll watch the replay. Thank you, Myrtle. Um, so I I'm probably going to end this in, in a moment, but um, for those of you uh, who are here, really appreciate you being here. And um, I hope you've hope you learnt, um, picked up a few little tips from this. I've got um, a Patreon as well. You can check out my, my Patreon. It's just uh, patreon.com slash watercolor mentor. And uh, I've got a whole bunch of classes there that um, that are available. Um, if you sign up for the um, Cobalt Blue, which is like $10, $10 basically a month, you get access to about 23 courses in there. Um, I don't know how long I'll be, like I, I was thinking of actually um, creating my own sort of platform to put courses on. So um, for those of you who are already on Patreon, I'll, um, I'll keep uploading to that and keep the videos um, on there. But uh, at some point, I think I'll be transitioning to another another platform, um, uh, my own sort of um, my own sort of so, sort of platform. And um, I have to decide what to do as pricing and all that sort of stuff. But I'll, I'll keep everything the same um, for everyone that's that's been on Patreon. Um, I'm having a look to see um, also, like if I can do a few more paintings, like request paintings from from people. So, if you have any, you know, if you have any any uh, requests, um, just let me know. You can contact me on Facebook, or there's like a, uh, well, you can email. There's an email through contact me. You can put in the chats. Uh, also, on the Watercolor Mentor Facebook page, there is a um, there's a section there that you can. You can basically um, make a request. I think there's a the, the last second last post I put in. A, so would would be nice to to hear from some of you. Um, thank you so much. Uh, you know, Nancy Grace says these are awesome, Darren. Thank you and I appreciate it, Nancy. And these these both had a, a common theme, and that's sort of having this vibrant sort of warm area, and then having it sort of fade down into a bit of darkness. Um, Sort of reflections on the ground and um I, I like this one actually a lot better especially these trees this is my favorite bit just these trees going up there and then the, this area of preserved light there and um goes to show like I, I did very little fiddling around there this one quite quickly in comparison to this and sometimes they look better um when you um yeah when when you when you paint them quicker as long as you know what you're you're doing and you've got an idea of um how it will look like and um Thea says, don't know, don't know what uh, Patreon is. It's basically a, a website. It's like a membership website where I, and you can sign up. Um, if you, if you want to support me basically um, to, and, and you, you get all these, uh, basically I'll put all a uh, bunch of courses up on there. You can check them out. I've got about 23 courses, about 200, I don't know, probably 200 plus um, hours of content on there too, um, that I've recorded many different scenes um so you can you can check it out it's on the uh yeah if you go to my you go to the watercolor mentor facebook page there's like links to it but it's just patreon.com slash watercolor mentor um it's three tiers it's two dollars five bucks and i think there's a ten dollar tier as well um and and i like you know thank you to to those um who've also um supported me through um that tip that app that i that i have as well the buy me a coffee app it was it's really nice um to sort of get a bit of support through that as well, and I've really appreciated it. It's uh, something I never expected to to, um, to to sort of work out this whole situation, but um, it's been fun. And uh, yeah, I'm just checking if there's anything else. I think V says thanks. Uh, so V says thanks, Darren. Missed all, missed it all live. So I'll be watching it and painting this after the live session ends. Both are just amazing. Thanks, V. And um, you, you, you know, uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that it was helpful and uh, really interested to see what, um, what what you come up with and also what everyone else comes up with um, later on. So I think that's about, I think really that's about it. I'm going to start winding down. Um, question by Sim Mayer, she's asking, I don't have neutral tint, what can I take or what can you use? Basically, neutral tint's just a convenience color it's a mixture of a gray it's basically just a, a gray 
and um, you can mix up your three primaries if you've got a yellow a red and a blue if you mix them up together you're going to get a, a gray and um, that's basically um, yeah you can use that as a neutral tint replacement more or less um, so yeah equal portions or you can add in um, a bit more blue into that mix to make it a, a cooler neutral color or a, um, a warmer gray by adding in some of the a bit more of a concentration of the reds and, and the yellows as well so hope that helps it's just a convenience color it's kind of like sap green very easy to squeeze out of the tube and use that's why I, I use it but um, yeah I'm gonna actually get a bottle uh, little tube of Payne's gray I think that's gonna help as well um, so um, I think we'll I think I'll end this um, but thank you all for coming along and um, Thank you all for the company. Really, really appreciate appreciate it, and it's uh, it, it keeps me motivated. It really keeps me motivated to continue on and and paint. It's like I've got a, a few of you here, just always always um, saying such nice things, and um, makes me feel like uh, like even when I was halfway through this one, I was thinking, no, uh, it, it's not really looking like how I wanted it to look like. But you know what? I'm gonna finish it off. So. Um, fantastic so I'll see you all next time there's another one on this Saturday and um, if you like this if you like the video and uh, please share it around and um, you yeah, share it and, and like the video share it around with your friends or, or you know in groups of stuff and um, that sort of helps me uh, get my stuff out there and um, yeah I'll catch you on Saturday <laughs>